Hello, hello, I'm here. <laughs> oh my. What a rush. <laughs> Hi everybody. Sorry I'm late. What a nightmare. Hopefully you can see now. Um I don't know. It's all it's all gone. It's all gone um It's it's all gone pear shaped people. <laughs> I'm on though. I am live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the camera killer, as we see. Oh dear, oh dear. No, well, I had a bit of a revamp um, in the week and adjusted all my, um, well, basically unplugged everything, took it all out of the room, cleared the floor, and then put it all back in. But what I didn't do was test it all. And of course, now I've plugged it all back in, all ready to go live, and nothing works. All my buttons are wrong. My intro button's not working, and... Oh, dear. Yes. Continuity has gone wrong. <laughs> Something's gone very wrong. But I don't know what it is, Theo. So I've got one camera not working up here. Which, you know, I'm a camera down. But, you know, oh, I think it's a major goat time. I think we better have a goat, haven't we? So, being that my camera's not working... Means my lapel mic won't work either, so I'm on the desk mic. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, I know. Straight out of the shower, people. It's been a mental rush today, to be fair, and the bench is a hell of a state. Um, main reason for the rush, and I'll let you see the shirt again, because I know you love this one. Makes your telly school funny. Main reason is I've, I've been playing with this Vic 20 and um, I was trying to make up some pieces to fix the case because these are notorious for the case fixing tabs to snap off and this is definitely, definitely uh, the problem. So I decided to um, draw it in 3D print some repair pieces and what happened? The 3D printer decided it wasn't going to work. So I spent ages measuring, drawing, trying to 3D print it and that didn't work. So. You know, you know what it is. You know what it is. I'm trying to run the stream on the Vic Twenty. It might be might be better, Benji. Actually. Anyway, it won't broke Harvey. I just wanted to tidy up, mate. That was all. Try and get my tool, tools into some sort of order, which I have achieved actually. Uh, my toolbox is looking much better. I've got a bigger gap to get in and get bits, so um, all good. Right, so let's um, let's get back up to the top and see who's in here. Whoa, what a rush. I haven't even got my beer sorted yet. So Spanky. Spanky's Magic Piano. Spanky's been very helpful to me, but we'll get on to that later. Doesn't look like he'll be here till three. Daniel's there. He's going to try his best. I'm not sure what Daniel's going to try his best at, but possibly his best to be here. Foxy's here. Mike Atlantis. He's got a few things to do. Um... So I'm not sure if he can, can come on. Victor, what have you won? Who knows, mate? You know, that'd be funny if you won, won some more stuff, wouldn't it? <laughs> Rob. Oh, Rob's laid up with a bad leg. So nice to have something interesting to watch. It might be interesting, Rob. Sorry to hear you got a bad leg, though, mate. hope that gets better soon. And I'm sure I can bore you to death. I might even put you to sleep. You never know. George is just in time. He obviously beat me to it. Fat Tony. Afternoon, Fat Tony. How are you? Uh, Cody's Paul. Watching from his bench today. Got a few jobs to get through and cataloging parts. Bretsky. Afternoon, Bretsky. Uh, Benji. I think we said hello to Benji. Victor. Victor's already cleared some space for it. Come on. I'm all, I literally have just got out of the shower, people. So apologies for the... The wet look, but you know, got a bit of a your voice has come back, Paul. That's good to know. Harvey, hi, Harvey. <laughs> Harvey's cleared space as well for the radio. <laughs> Theo. Afternoon, Theo Bovro. I did say hello to you just now. But, uh, there you go. Did, 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 did. 
Okay, who else? I'm in here. Yeah, I said I'm running late, but nearly there. A letter from Mrs. Cruncher. <laughs> Mrs. Cruncher's gone to work today. Um, this is unusual to come on of a Saturday, but I've got company yeah, tomorrow afternoon. We've got some friends coming around, so I didn't want to have to cut everything short. Does the R24 come with batteries? <laughs> no, it doesn't, Tony. Get yourself a power cable. <laughs> Harvey's uh, doing a bit of Gary Glitter there for me. I think we've got everybody covered, haven't we? It's all gone black, yeah. It, it didn't. The, the problem was, is um, because I've, I've had a problem with this camera, I've deleted this camera off of my stream and um, it's put everything back one slot, so all my buttons aren't working on my stream deck either. It's just, just, a, just for the sheer hell of it, you know? <laughs> right, uh, I missed anybody. Let me just have a look. Oi, Theo! couple of quid for a new camera <laughs> a new hairdo Theo I think thank you very much Theo <laughs> oh dear that just popped straight up in my face then that thank you very much Theo hi Nick yeah as I say I got company tomorrow so audio syncs way out oh, I know that's because I'm using a, a different microphone aren't I? Let's have a look. Cam Link D5. No, we don't want the Cam Link D500. We've not got the audio for that. Let's see if I can do something to this audio. <coughs> see if I can do something to this. <coughs> Okay, is that is that changed at all? I've just adjusted it to 100 milliseconds, so hopefully, um, hopefully, that will help. Yes, I have got some new screwdrivers, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Hi, SJD. Daniel, Daniel's back in. Afternoon, SJD. It was very kindly popped me a couple of quid in for a new camera. <laughs> oh dear hope. Well, let's hope. Let's hope, Theo, that we don't need a new camera. Jesus, that would not be pleasant. I don't want to replace it, but won't be replacing that one in my lifetime anyway. You like quite like the seventies dubbed kung fu look. <laughs> yeah. Is that any better? The audio now is the sync any better? Obviously, I'm synced up for my um, lapel mic, not the desk mic. But I've just chucked 100 milliseconds in it, so hopefully that'll that'll help. Good afternoon, Bjorn, and thank you for your help last week, mate, and welcome again. I need flares and platforms. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Okay. I've got some clearing up to do before we can look at anything here today, really. Because everything is in a bit of a mess, to be fair. Let's have a quick look at what the um, webcam looks like. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I've got stuff everywhere. I've been cleaning this um, keyboard and rebuilding it. It's uh, taken a fair bit of time, to be honest. A lot, um, lot longer than I thought, but it's been well worth it, as you'll see. So I'm just... Um, just get clearing up some space here. I've got a few more things to try, well, a couple more things to try with the tape deck. The elusive tape deck that would not um, work for us last week. I'm going to try and possibly put a little program in it this week and see if we can get it to work. But I've got some special cleaner for the pinch roller. <clears throat> so we're going to see if that, um, that'll help. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's lack of lack of uh, alcohol. 
Hey Doug, how are you? 15 degrees centigrade here. Nice for January. Well, it's horrible out here today, um, Doug. Horrible. Hey Paul! Thank you. Cheers Paul for the poo. I need, I need poo thrown at me today. <clears throat> so let me see what I can do with these cameras then. The cameras, the few cameras that I do have. Oh, he says knocking it out of its holder. So my cameras that I do have today, I obviously got the <clears throat> main camera there. And I've got my webcam, so I am a bit short of cameras today, but you know, I'm sure we'll get through. I'm sure we'll get by. So let's have a look. Will it do picture in picture? Yeah, it will do. I'm just gonna have to click everything manually because um So here's my webcam view, and that should be me picture in picture. There we go. Okay. We're good. We are good. <laughs> but yeah, it's horrible. It's raining here, and it's probably, well, it's 24 degrees in here, which is really hot. I don't know why it's so hot in here. It's all the lights and cameras that aren't working. <laughs> is the audio any better, or am I still, like, out of sync? You're so glad you're not using headphones. Why's that, George? <laughs> oh, it's that again, isn't it? We definitely do need a, an isolation situation on that. That I'm just trying to think what I can isolate it with. I did have it on this rubber mat in the other day, but I've got my keyboard on that. Well, that's, a, that's not a good shot. Let's get down there a bit. Knocking the camera. There. there, that's a great picture now, isn't it? I'm isolated now, but you can't see anything. <laughs> it's just because I'm moving stuff around on the desk, George, and I do I do need an isolation mount for this. But um, have you seen the price that they um, they charge for those for the isolation mount for this microphone? It's mental money. It's absolutely crazy. There is, uh, and I'm probably making a lot of noise now, but there is a, a screwed fitting in the bottom there to take a mount. Um, but I think uh, we need to investigate that. If anyone's got any ideas on on a mount for that, then let me know. But as I say, at the moment my lapel mic isn't working because it's connected to the camera. <coughs> anyway. We'll have to make the most of what we've got, won't we, people? Because the show must go on, regardless. No point crying over spilt milk and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Only a few more poos needed to pay for a lens cap. <laughs> oh, dear. Hang from the ceiling. What, me, um... Me, Steve, or uh, or the mic. <laughs> Very good, Bjorn. Bungee cords from your bike and hag it from a shelf. Bungee cords. Yeah. Good thought, um, George, but... Hang from the ceiling, though. I did know. I was only messing, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. It needs a boom mount, really. It needs a boom mount, so it's off the desk and away from me, and it'd be better. But that, that should have isolated now, because I put it on the rubber matting, so hopefully. Hopefully, that will be quieter. So you should all be able to see the keyboard. Um... As I say, it's a pain that I've got, I haven't got my main camera, really, but as I say, we'll get through. We'll get by. We'll get by. So this is the keyboard. I'll say it's, it's upside down at the moment because I've been messing around with these mounts on the back here. And uh, these were broken off. And what I've done is I've just um, hot welded them with my soldering iron for the minute. 
and then I measured it and I just drew a little piece um, to fill it in. Hey, Derek, how are you, mate? Welcome. That's a, that's a that's some entry, Derek. That is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Derek. Much appreciated, mate. So yeah, I've, I've hot welded these back on with the um, with the solder. All right, I've got the overhead camera, so we can play with that as well. While we're here, let's make sure that one's working. Yeah, that one's working. So yeah, there's the overhead camera. So you can see th this is what I've been messing with this morning. I've just um, welded those little pegs back on. They're not particularly brilliantly welded on, but as I say, what my idea was to was to 3D print a piece that went in here with that lip on it. And either glue it or plastic weld it in place here on all of the, all of them because there's more than one. So yeah, there's, there's three separate sections that clip on. These are rubbish. These are, they're so fragile. Somebody's ripped the case apart, really. But um, also the LED you should have a red LED, but someone's done a horrific job on that. I don't know if you saw that last week, but it was all wrapped up with some like um, electrical tape, and that was pretty bad. Plus, as I say, it should be a red LED, not a, not a green one. So I've got that to do. So I'm going to pop a, a red one back in it and uh, put that back together. But the main sort of success has been the keyboard. So if I pop this over, how about that? <clears throat> What's George saying? Boom mate's cheapest decent one is from Thoman. 50 quid gets you a monster. All right, okay. To be fair, Rum George, I think the actual Yeti one is around about 120, 130 pounds. The proper one for this mic but you know I think it's got standard standard fittings on it I think it has anyway I mean I can show you the side of it there look if I, if I can get in in the shot so it's got these um, mounts either side whether it connects whether the mount that you're talking about George connects up to the underside here in this screwed fitting I don't know Anyway, that's that's doing your heads in now, messing that with that, that camera. So here's the keyboard. Um, and if you remember, this was in hell of a state. Now let me see if I can just get you some of the before pictures. <clears throat> because I did take some before pictures of this. Let's see if I can get to my Google Photos and I'll share the um, screen with you. <clears throat> well, I'll try. Actually, I've taken some other pictures there, so I'll show you those in a minute. So I wonder if my screen cap's working. No, it's not. That's a surprise. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Okay, so let's go onto my screen then. Hopefully you can see that. So let me double sure that you're on my screen. Yes, you are. So this is some pictures that I took of the um, of the keyboard before I started work on it. So you can see I've got three um, keys missing. Um, two of those I had, but the mounts, as you can see, it snapped off underneath, and the mount on that one had snapped. So I was missing the backspace key, but I believe George has found that one. And uh, the seven and eight keys I did have, but obviously there's nothing to fix them to. Someone had stuck a bit of plastic in there, and this this was hell of a state. This one. 
that's the other side of the board with the F keys, the function keys. You can see it's pretty cruddy. And there's some close-ups I did underneath the keys when I started taking them off. God, look at the state of it. It was, it was horrible. I literally had to take this down in the kitchen sink and uh, get Mrs. Cruncher's um, detergents out. I think we used star drops on it in the end. That's pretty crusty, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the state. What is that on it? Is it mould? Has someone been sick on it? Ooh, not good. <laughs> Look at it. I just do not know what, what all this is. All this verdigris, look. It's verdigris. Got to, got, got to get the verdigris in. So this was the underside of the um, keyboard. And this is these little um, posts, three of which were broken. It's just me taking them apart, really. I managed to break one of the keyboard, uh, one of the space bar mounts. When I was cleaning, I was a bit over over keen with the toothbrush. I managed to snap that off of there, but I've since managed to plastic weld that back in, and uh, I've actually added some more ABS in behind to support it. So that's looking okay now. So here's the keys after they've been washed to dry in. So I had a massive great tub of keys. All the springs got washed, and these little support posts got washed, and that was the result which you can see now in front of you it does look um, I don't know whether it's just my keyboard uh, my screen but it's um, it is a bit yellower than that that's like the original colour that it should be but uh, in real life it is a bit yellower than that for some reason but to be fair it's not it's not far off but it could do with going out in the summer and uh, being retro brighted <clears throat> so let's get back to my chat. Hey, Sean Man Cave Workshop. Welcome, Sean. So let me just catch up with the uh, chat. It does look new, Sean, doesn't it? It's um, it's hell of a difference. Yeah, I'll have to get you to send me the link for those, George. I'd definitely be interested in doing that because I do like my lapel mic because I, I can like work and turn away from it and everything's good still. But uh... <clears throat> Hi, Jess. Afternoon. How are you? Should have given it a bath in the magic juice. I haven't got any magic juice. I should have got some. I went in screw fix in the week. You reckon that's mouldy, yeah, Benji? Do you? Hi, Majid. How are you? Thanks, Majid. Appreciate that, mate. Should have put it in the dishwasher. I did consider that, um, Theo. To be honest, my only concern with putting it in the dishwasher was, would it warp the plastic? That that was the thing. Would it warp the plastic? And I really didn't want to warp the plastic. To be fair, so I didn't risk it. I'm good, Majid. Thank you very much. Just looking at my old Commodore Vic 20 at the moment, which has had a bit of a bit of a spruce up. <clears throat> so let's have a quick look at the over with it, the overhead camera. So you can see now it's it's a different. Um, different altogether you can even see the uh, plastic underneath shining through look so they have they have come up like brand new really really pleased with that so that's that's the keyboard done and that was a major major job that took a lot of time so uh, really that one apart from this LED we can put to bed so let's put that one to one side for a minute and let's have a look at this LED and get that done. Again, I've not put this back together since I've done the keyboard. 
So let's zoom back out a bit. Let's get the uh, soldering arm plugged up. You don't want to see my ear, do you? Yeah, you can see my ear. What the hell? Who's got Bourneville chocolate? A Bourneville colour, yeah. <laughs> they are nice. It is spotless, Jess. I've absolutely cleaned the death cleaned it to death. Just put my microphone even more isolated on even more rubber matting. That's nicely in the view of the camera now, so let's switch to the overhead camera. Let's get this lovely LED in shot. So as I say, we've got a green LED, it should be red. Um, I do not know what they've done to the solder. It looks like they've soldered it, then squashed it with some pliers. I don't. I really don't know what's going on with this. Look. See, you've even got teeth marks on it. Look. So yeah, that's not, not really a good job, is it? And as I say, we've got a green LED, it should be red. Unless anybody knows any different. Um, but this has certainly been got at. So Magic saying he's got an ICF 2001D whose FM does not work. If I press the FM button, then it hangs and no button works. Right after that, unless I take the batteries off, an FM does also catch any stations. I think, Majid, the first thing is, is unfortunately going to be to recap the thing. Um, could be a power supply issue. I think FM does take a bit more power than the other bands. Recap it, then you need to check all the um, frequencies against the service manual. Because it might be that uh, one of your voltages is off and needs adjusting. It's such a complex radio, it's, it's not impossible to try and try and tell you what that is without looking at it. So what I want to do with this, I want to um, desolder. I need to make sure it's the right way around. So it looks like the negative is... Um, I'm assuming this is the right way around. Yeah, it looks like a negative is to the, the flatter, longer bit. The positive is, is the longer of the two pins. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that right off. Look at your doggy tails going. Trouble is, mummy's at work. And they haven't been out for a walk today yet. Oh, I shouldn't have said that word. They did have a good run yesterday, mind you. Right. We certainly don't need a whacking great long um, wire like that. So let's do the negative first. Let's cut that right back. I say I've got some screwdrivers to show you in a minute, and I'll explain about that in a minute. But I will will show you because you guys have helped very much helped me get these screwdrivers. I'm going to cut them one at a time so I don't get confused. So that's our negative wire. Let me just double check that. Yeah. So let's just turn my soldering iron up. So I've had it turned down because I've been plastic welding. Heat shrink, yeah, definitely going to be heat shrinking that, George. I did order myself in some heat shrink in the week, specifically to do this. And all this lot's turned up from RS, but it, it looks too big. It looks way too big. I've got all this from RS. <laughs> and it looks, uh, it looks way too big. Bought it for 1.2 mil wire, but that looks massive. 
I want some nice thin stuff. Well, I have got some thin stuff anyway. Right, so how am I going to do this, Graham? Let's get that out of the way. So what's the web camera doing? Hey, webcam. We can put the webcam in. We can have the overhead cam, picture in picture. Does that work? No, not really. Right. I had to move that out of the way because it was in the way of my soldering iron. Really are running half mast today. I thought it'd be better to come, actually come on and go live rather than hang about and um, waste time trying to fix stuff. So I'm live. <laughs> Back in five, Paul. Okay, mate. Picking up transistors. He just tipped a load over. <laughs> Okay, Majid, my email then is That's my email for you, Majid. Just trying to clean this uh, solder and I get the ABS off of it. <laughs> Right, solder. Everything's a mess here, as I say. Huge rush to get on today for some reason, but. Seems to tin the end of these wires. I don't know why I bothered with flux there, right? don't need flux with new wiring. It's easier to hold this in one of these third hand tools so and just crack that out. This is one of the best um, third hand tools that I've um, ever found. I'll be trying to get another one because I've, I've pretty much killed this one. Doing various nasty things to it. Just bear with me. You got that now, Magic, hopefully. Let's just get that in the shot of the overhead camera so you can see in that one as well. Rather than seeing my ugly mug. So let's just uh, tin that as well. I've got a little bit of heat shrink, so I'm just going to use a bit of this. This does look thinner than that new stuff I've just bought, but I will um, get a bit of that out in a bit and have a look. Just cut a couple bits of that. Always, always <laughs> the same minute you you solder these things up and then forget you haven't put the heat sh heat shrink on, and then you've got to put it back on again. Just pop the heat shrink on each one. Let's turn it around so I can see it. Let's get you back on that. Oh, timber! That's the thing, the magnifying glass is pretty heavy. And if you uh, use it like this, it's, um, it does tend to want to tip over. Right, stay still. Okay, that's the negative done. Let's cut the positive off the same length. Or the anode and cathode as it is on a diode.
as well. Light down so you can see a bit better. There we are, both joined. It's just a case now of uh, popping these heat shrinks up. Let's see if we can find the lighter. Be careful because obviously the lens is plastic. There we are. That's much neater than, than that that was on it before. So that's another job done. Another job done. Right, what's next then? We can put this back together now then. Get my um, camera sorted out. So yeah, we've got to get it back in the uh, hole there. And uh, quite a nifty way they've done this. There's two little tiny parts to this. I had to take this out to clean it anyway because I wouldn't have been able to clean it else. So there's a piece that goes in the top of the case here. That the LED pushes into and then this bottom ring here just sits on the bottom of it and clamps it all into place. So that's the two bits there. So that's the top piece, that's the bottom. I have got to um, clean this anyway because it's... Um, as is everything here, it's pretty mucky. So I'm just use a bit of isopropyl for a second. Isopropyl, isopropanol. Just to clean that. Because it was pretty grimy in underneath the power hole where it goes here. The power hole? I suppose it is a power hole. Right, that's nice and squeaky clean, so that just pushes in there. Carefully, Graham. There we go. Then our LED. Pops up like that. And in underneath. Yeah, we've got to put that on first. So that basically sits in there. And this little ring pushes. Down and locks it all in place, in theory. That's not working. Why isn't that working, Graham? Okay. Hmm. Wonder what's up with that. You've got lots of those. LED mounts, have you? <clears throat> I'm just 
just having a look at this because it doesn't seem to be right. That goes in there. I think that's got to actually push in further than that, hasn't it? That's better. Okay. Yeah, that's more like it. Right, just hadn't pushed it in far enough. So let's try that again. Just got to be a bit more aggressive with it, Graham. No, I'm going to have to pull it out. <laughs> this is tricky, isn't it? So I have to pull it out. Push. Push it LED into it. Push it back in the hole. Really? No. It's no wonder the other one was um, glued in place. Let's switch on to the other camera a minute. So yes, yeah, no wonder they taped the other one in place. Is it? Should it be that stiff to get in there? That's definitely right. I don't want to force it and risk damaging the um, surround, you see. Where's me? What have I got here? What have I got that I can give that a poking with? Plastic. Hmm, that is some um, really, really stiff. I'm wondering if I got the right size LED on that. Whether I've got to push this in first, then try and force the LED into it. Maybe, maybe that will work. Ah, there we go. Got it, I think. Let's see if I can get the uh, ring back on it, the other side. Yes. Got it. There we are. Brilliant. Whew. There we are. One LED fitted. That was I made that look difficult, didn't I? Thanks, George. <laughs> I saw that af after uh, I did it. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Andrew Alsfer. Some damage to the balcony. You haven't dropped one of your boat anchors on it, have you? Your LED is missing, Harvey, is it? So you're going to need to probably tap George up for one of these little um, LED clamp things then. You gave away four Commodore 64 keyboards. Dear, oh dear. You're like Father Christmas, are we? Don't hot glue it. No. Sorted. That looks nice, doesn't it? Hey, hi Chris, how are you? Benji's after... Everyone's after your LED holders, George. <laughs> oh, dear. So that's another job done anyway. That's um, looking really good now. Let's say, we've still got the problems with the keyboard, um, the top cover mountings, but... Apart from that, we've got a lovely working keyboard now. Spacebar's working fine that I repaired. 
looking good. Right. We've also got the bottom cover. Again, this I've cleaned. It's come up really nice. All the rubber feet are still there, which is good. It's got all the original rubber uh, feet on it. A lot of them haven't. It did have some issues with... Um, where am I? I'm on the wrong camera. It did have some issues with the um, little plastic screw mounts in here. Some of these were broken and cracked. So all I've done is just heated them up very gently with the soldering iron on a fairly low heat and just melted it back together because it's made of ABS by the looks of it. ABS will um, will weld itself back together with a bit of heat, which is how 3D printing works really. Just, uh, is that clean there? It's clean, but... Yeah, looks like I missed a bit there. <laughs> but anyway, that's all nice and clean. Now, this is the original um, colour here. I don't know if you can see the difference if I put the um, other case up to it. You can see it has definitely, it has definitely yellowed. It's not a massive difference to be fair, but it is a few shades darker. So it will need to be retro brighted and there's various recipes for retro brighting. Hi Radic, how are you? Afternoon Radic. Right, let's uh, get the camera a bit further back. Let's put my little bit of heat shrink. I'm missing that other camera already. So the next thing we need to do is get the um, there we are. So we need to get the main board put back in. But I've got some jobs to do on this one first. So that one just sits in there like that. But it is still filthy. Um, there's a couple other jobs. I've got to redo the um, heat sink compound on the bridge rectifier on this one. There's lots of talk online about um, the power supplies in these um, being problematic and causing death to some of the other components in there. <coughs> Luckily, this is an earlier two pin one. So all that plugs in is a transformer and all the power supply stuff is done on here rather than in the power brick. So that's why we've got the bridge rectifier here and we've got um, a voltage regulator. All that's in the power brick on the later models. So it's good in one way because it takes a lot of the heat out of, out of the unit to have it in the power brick. But on the other hand, it, um, it does mean the power bricks can be a bit unreliable. So I have got a replacement for this one because again I've I've been doing some research and they do recommend that you replace this voltage regulator if you want to future proof the thing. It also they also say and I, I say they, I'm just really going on on research I've done online and other YouTubers that um, it ought to have a recap as well. Um, I don't think that the issue that we were having with the cassette deck was anything to do with the actual computer itself, but it may be. It's not 100%. I mean, these are all, uh, mostly all Nichicon caps, so they are really good quality, but they are obviously 30 years old. Yeah, 30, well, nearly 40 years old, actually. <clears throat> so at some stage, they're going to deteriorate if they haven't already. So I think the first job is going to be to um, just take take the, these, this metalwork off because underneath here as well is um, a bit of tape that's got all curled up and it's stopping the cartridges going back in properly. So you can't really see that, but uh, just in, in the slot there, there is... Um, can you see that? You might not be able to because of the light. The light in that way you might. But no, you can't quite see it. But there's some tape inside there that's just curling up. Stopping the top of the uh, the um, 
cassettes going in. Not cassettes, what are they called? Cartridges. So there, yes, a few bits to do. But before we do that, let's um, just have a look at something else that I've picked up in the week. No, we want... Yeah, there's a main camera. So you people very kindly over the Christmas period and, and ever since really have been um, giving me some super chats. And uh, I wanted to get some, some things that would um, help me on the bench and um, help your experience as well <laughs> without me faffing about with too much stuff. So I've mentioned that in some previous episodes that um, I was after some new screwdrivers. So uh, with the aid of your super chats, I have gone out and bought some screwdrivers. So let me grab them out and I'll show you what I've got. I've still not 100% worked out exactly how I'm going to um, mount these. So at the moment, I've just revamped my toolbox to... Um, I've revamped my, my tool case, made it a lot neater. In fact, a hell of a lot tidier, actually. <laughs> I've made it a lot tidier. I'm going to just get the uh, webcam down there. I'll just show you how tidy it is compared to what it was last time you saw it. If I can get the uh, camera out far enough. So, yeah, there's my... Uh, tool case I've got uh, I've got wires and that hanging everywhere here at the moment it's um, a lot lot tidier so I can now get at things a lot easier that I've made the gap between the um, laptop desk and my main desk I've made it a, a few inches bigger so it's just a bit easier for me to reach in there and get stuff and uh, I haven't got the screwdrivers that they sit up in the top there but um, I've got them off on the bench at the moment. So yeah, that's uh, helped me a lot, just clearing everything out. I've managed to sort out the wires a little bit better here as well. I've got them out of the way of the tools because they were draped over the top of my toolbox before and I couldn't get at anything. It, it, it was a bit of a fight, to be honest, to do anything. So, <laughs> But you know. I'm sure we're all like it. We've all got some um, workbenches that are hard to work with and I sort myself out here. Let me get uh... So this is what I've um, purchased with uh, super chats that you very very kindly um have been given to me. Um, YouTube haven't paid it to me yet, but it, it'll come at some stage. So I've um, this is what I've, I've done with it. So I've managed to get myself um, pr pretty much a set. It's a work in progress because um, I don't really know which ones I have and haven't got yet. I probably need some slightly smaller um, slotted screwdrivers to get a proper set. So that's that's the slotted screwdrivers there. So I've just got um, oh, that says 1.2 by 8. That's the tip thickness, I believe. So they're all Weira screwdrivers, all German. But I know Paul recommended these, and I have got some um, nut drivers in, in the same set as this. Plus all the bits that I got from the uh, Christmas Advent calendar, they're all the same. I've got a Weir a bit check set, so I've got quite a bit of their kit, and it is really, really good. So I thought I'd um, get myself a decent set. As you can see on the back, they're all marked, so uh, I don't need to pull them out to see what they are. Smallest one is um, a 0.5 by 3. They do have 2.5 as well, but um, I think... I could only get that one in like an insulated screwdriver, so I may have to get one of those. But at the, in the meantime, I've still got another one that I can use. So that's all the flat blades. Um, some really useful sizes. That that one's particularly useful. These aren't flared either, they're straight. 
very often when you've got a flared screwdriver you'll find that uh, the tip will go in the hole of something especially if you're um, working on a case of something and the, the actual edges will catch and you can't get right in but these are straight which I find a lot better you can see the larger one is, is flared you see what I mean by the straight and flared if my camera focus and no, it doesn't like focusing on that that's, that's better <laughs> see that's the difference between the straight and flared so the larger larger of them is is flared but that's a huge screwdriver I'm not going to use that one very often I don't expect so yeah that was the uh, straight flat blades slotted whatever they want to call them let's pop those back in a minute otherwise that will lose them and they get mixed up I did have them in, in descending order but it looks like I've put them back the wrong way oh well oh there's one other one there look one other flat blade that's gonna got a flare tip so yeah it covers pretty much all the sizes I'm gonna need then we've got the Phillips and posi drive so the white the ones with the white backs are number one and number two posi drive and there are these laser tips as well so you've got like a serrated lasered tip on them to um where, where am i yeah they've got like a serrated tip on them to help them bite into the the screws i don't know if you can see that on the overhead camera better Where am I? There. Yeah. So you see the tips of those. They got some. Um, can you see that? There's a very slight gnarling on the end. And um, I have used the number one quite a bit actually. This this one here. And I can tell you they definitely do bite into screws a lot lot better than my other ones. My other ones were pretty pretty um, pretty worn out to be honest. So that I, I was long overdue for a set of screwdrivers. And the other two, again, a number one and a number two posi drive. A posi drive you don't see so much in the older stuff. Um, again, laser tips on them, but um, you do see them on a lot of the newer equipment that I try to avoid. <laughs> so there you go. That's my um, screwdrivers purchased by you guys so uh, yeah thank you very much for that much appreciated so thanks for that everybody that's um that's what your super chats have paid for who else we've got in then has anyone else popped in anyone else popped in radek i think we saw spanky afternoon <laughs> spanky spanky very kindly as i say provided those um those standoffs for me for the for the um vic 20 keyboard and it, he, he gave me a backspace key as well and uh, much appreciated uh, spanky for, very much so no orange ones what orange ones do you want benji Simon, how are you? You've just been given a Commodore Plus 4 in the box with a drive. Oh, very nice, Simon. Oh, that'd be great. Plus 4. I can remember them coming out. I think, was the Plus 4 in between the Commodore 64 and the Amiga? Or was it in between the Vic 20 and the Commodore 64? I'm not sure. It was one of them ones It didn't come out for long, did it? I think Commodore 16 was very similar. You've just bought one on eBay. Oh, a new LED with the holder. Harvey, oh, good stuff, mate.
So I'm just catching up quickly with um, with it. I'm not I've not stopped talking. Well, I have, but I'm I've still got microphone. <laughs> luckily. Nice pictures on my Facebook. No idea, Simon. I'm sure somebody will know the um I know the origins of the Commodore Plus Four. Uh, is that a Weera corkscrew? Yes. Yes. I've got a Weera bottle opener. And this came in my um where did my corkscrew go? This came in my advent calendar. So, just to go with my drivers, I've got the um, bottle opener and the corkscrew from Weera. <laughs> that came in my uh, in my advent calendar. Who asked me that? Yes, Fat Tony. <laughs> can never have too many too many corkscrews and bottle openers <laughs> they are proper tools I'm sure aren't they I don't I don't know if you can actually buy them I mean they're they're fairly chunky proper rubberized handles exactly the same as the screwdrivers really are well made stuff isn't it but yeah, that was from my advent calendar. I found that corkscrew's really sharp. I keep catching my finger on that. Right, what have I got to do then? Come on, Graham, what have you got to do? You've got to clean that board. Um, I've got to mess about with the cassette decks as well because I've got... Anybody ever used any of this stuff before? Now, somebody somewhere said this was good for, um, this is what you should use for cleaning rubbers on cassette decks and printers, etc. Where are we? Platen cleaner. Anybody ever heard of that before? I'll let you peruse that because I don't know how, how this works. It's obviously, it's got top off God, it's a hell of a tight top it can it can, came with a whole sheet of stuff on what you're not you're supposed to do and not supposed to do with it you're not supposed to get it on your hands it can be lethal if breathed if you breathe it in I just sprayed it on my hands ah uh, ideal she been watching as well, Paul. Good old Mrs. Cody's. <laughs> so anybody <coughs> ever used this before then and um can tell me how you use it because I was just going to squirt it into into um just like a plastic cup and then just use it with a cotton bud but from what they're saying I've got to get gloves on and um, breathing apparatus and all sorts to use this oh, bear with me I'm just gonna nip down and get myself uh, a beer a minute because I may even a chance to get me beers yeah and I haven't got a mic so I can't take you with me so I'll be back in a second <laughs>
Right. We have beer. But the beer supply is getting mega low. There's no beer in the house, people. No excuses for me, Fat Tony. <laughs> uh, your mum used that for cleaning her false teeth, Theo? That's plaque cleaner, <laughs> not platen, platen cleaner. <laughs> George is saying it's great stuff and the warnings are overrated. Well, let me contemplate using it. Literally, there, there is no instructions with it. It's just a bottle of stuff. And uh, apparently it rejuvenates rubber. Is that right? It's probably not the right glass for Guinness, but... I'm just having a Guinness because literally there is no other beer in the house. Just the one can. Can't be to drop a Guinness, can you? If all else fails, go for it. You misread it, Theo. <laughs> uh. Harvey's been electrocuted. I've had an electric shock. I can't say been electrocuted as such. <clears throat> anyway, cheers everybody and uh, happy new year still because it is just the start of the year really, isn't it? So I've got that to try on, on the um, on the pinch rollers. Does look like some other information on the inside, possibly, is there? Oh, that's just different languages, I think, on the inside. Maybe facelift swallowed and enters airways. Yeah. Dangerous stuff, people. So if anybody else tries buying this, you do so at your own risk and uh, take advice of all the safety information. And when this got sent through, I had like a massive great ream of paper that came with it. Is that it there? <coughs> yeah. So this is the paperwork that came with this. It's like pages and pages of it that. This is just on that one product. Safety information. There's got to be. There's got to be eight or no ten sheets of paper. They're easy. Three, six. Let's put ten or twelve sheets of paper that just came with safety information just for this one product. So scary stuff. So I think if I do spray it, I'll take it outside, spray it into a plastic container, then bring it back up and use um. Use a. What am I trying to think here? I use a cotton bud to apply it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Uber. Can I get Uber to deliver some emergency beers? I know. Sure, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Mrs. Crunch is going to pick some up, but she won't be home till probably 8 o'clock tonight. Maybe later. Yeah, I have um, I have cleaned it, Spanky, but I think it's gone. They've gone a bit hard. 
and um, I don't know whether that's causing the the sort of the wrong speed so to speak because you can certainly see a fluctuation in the frequency um, on the oscilloscope definitely yes it's certainly lots of info for me there I know it's shocking Doug isn't it I spent all, all my money on screwdrivers see I've got no beer money no beer money left <laughs> So I think somebody asked me about the R24. Was that Derek just now? Somebody asked me about the R24, I think. <clears throat> somebody asked me about the R24. I did sort of glance at it and then uh, I totally forgot about it again. Oh, did I find the spacer I made for the R24, Derek? Yes. Yes, I did. That was the reason that I pulled everything out. It wasn't just to tidy the tool case up. It was so as I could actually find that missing spacer that I cut off. And somewhere. Somewhere. Now let me get back to my um, pictures. <clears throat> there it is, Derek. <laughs> Safely sellotaped on the back of the radio. So there's a little tiny piece that is. Um, there was some other pictures I was going to show you. Um, So that's my nicely tidied up floor, look. And my nice tidy tool case. But as I say, I've now replaced these screwdrivers along the top here with the um, Wiro ones. space here now. Where, where was I? <clears throat> ah yes. The modulator. So um, this is a picture of the RF modulator. <clears throat> where am I? Now this is not the one that we had problems with, this is the one that was actually working. But this wire here was literally held on by two strands onto this peg. And uh, as soon as I moved it, it just pulled off. So I've had to strip all this out, redo all these wires. Which was a bit of a pain. It's certainly been got at before. I wouldn't have thought it would have left the factory with all these plastics burnt back like that. So yeah, you can see the state it was all in. So I've had to redo all of this wiring. <clears throat> My phone's pinging off now. Let's just shut that up a minute. Okay, that's that um, silenced. Silenced. So yes, I've redone all that. Uh, what else have I got here? This is the inside of that modulator, if anyone was interested. Now, I had two different modulators, didn't I? One wasn't working and this one here was working. But I thought while I was rewiring it, I'd pop the lid off and have a look inside. Just in case there's any uh, nasty electrolytics lurking in there. Well, on this one there wasn't. But um, on the other one there was. Any other pictures that I can show you that, um, no, I think that's got it all covered. Oh, 
Let's get back onto my chat, see what you lot have been saying while I've been looking at my screen. Did I try your tape deck with the counter belt taken off? No, I didn't, Brett. Was that something that some um, is advised to try? There's no point you having the hobgoblin there, um, Harvey. I need him here. Oh, champion. You're on the champion. I love that champion. That's very nice. What am I that? Probably is. Is that my favourite beer? Probably, like, available beer. That's probably is one of my favourites, actually, if not my favourite. I do like Old Tom, though. Fit the Russians' TV transistors. <laughs> I did have a quick read through, Tony, just to just to try and see if it actually um, did tell me how to use this stuff. My camera's a bit dark. Let's just brighten that up a bit. Wrong way. That's a bit brighter. Not a lot brighter, but a bit brighter. You made a TV transmitter. Funny you should mention that, Sean, because I have got some wine downstairs. I got wine, whiskey, everything but beer. And the only other beer I've got here is alcohol-free. You know, it's not a Sunday though. So you were wondering if the counter wheels were sticking because that would cause the warbling. Yeah, I can understand that, Brat. But it's strange on on two separate cassette decks, so isn't it? But what I have got, I've got um, I've got the actual proper belts from as well. Because so the, if the belt, um, now the wild woman's gone to work, Spanky. If the belt was the wrong size, it's causing excessive strain. Maybe that would cause differences in speed. I don't know. So I've got a couple actual belts that are the right, exactly the right size. So we can try those. If I can clear the desk off and what, hook up a camera somewhere. Wine, whiskey, and wild women. Four p.m. Wine o'clock. I think it will be. It might even be quicker than that, Sean, because I think the Guinness is nearly gone. I was obviously a thirsty boy. Um. So let me think. What have I got to do? I've got to clean the board on the Fit Twenty. I've got to recap it. I've got to replace the voltage regulator. I've got some heat sinks. Ah, that was the other thing. I've got some heat sinks to go on the uh, VIC chip in it. Can you remember last week we were saying that the chip uh, was getting excessively hot? Well, um, I have had a look at other people's videos and that chip does get very hot, so it's not a, not a fault with the machine. Um, but but they basically recommend heat sinking it to um, to prolong the life of the chip because they're like real mega hard to get hold of. I did have a look to see if there was any other Vic chips about, and um, there's none. Well, there's no new old stock of the one that's in mine. There's a slightly different newer model, but um, go for the whiskey. It's just mouldy grapes. Well, wine is just mouldy grapes. You don't want to be hammered on the live stream, George. It's not a nice sign. I've been merry on the live stream before. I think last Christmas I was a bit merry. So, I do keep touching the um, filing cabinet behind me just to, to ground myself out, make sure I've got no static on me. So I don't want to zap any of these chips. Let's move my drink out of the way. Let's get this back onto the um, desk bench. I'm going to need to see if I can um, get this other camera 
hooked up um, a bit different a minute. Let's just stick the um, overhead cam on for a minute. Well, I'll get this one sorted out. So as I say, um, it's, a sh it's a shame in some ways to get rid of these cats because they are an Ichicon, but they are over 30 years old. This is this machine, the build date on this is 1981. So it's just under 40 years old, isn't it? So really, if I want to keep this long term, which I do, then um, I would like to get it working well, I would. I certainly don't want it to go wrong and take any of those impossible to get chips out. Let's see if I can wrap this Gorilla Pod thing around something here. Wrap it around my tripod and get us a view of my desk. Yeah, ain't it brilliant? <laughs> I really don't know what's why my other cameras decided not to work. So I'm going to have to move the microphone. And where are you going to move the microphone to, Graham? <laughs> oh dear, I'll tell you what. Make a video on fixing the tuning capacitor. We did that some... Um, we did that a couple of weeks ago, um, Majid. Did it on the R24. We fixed the tuning cap, but um, we still need to get that one back together. So let me have a look, see what that um, camera's looking like now. It's not the best picture, that, for some reason. Yeah, that's a horrible picture. Where's that horrible picture then? Okay. I'm still messing with the camera, people. I'll see if I can just get you a better view, that's all. Because uh, otherwise it's in the way of everything and I can't... I can't get in to show you what I'm doing. That's the whole point of having all these cameras, is so as you can actually see what, what we're doing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the legs on this, I've strangulated the hell out of it. <laughs> yeah, poor camera. What, what's he doing to you? I really don't want it there. Ideally there. Ba -ba -ba. The problem is, is the microphone's in the way as well, really. Okay, what's that look like? What does that look like? Too far away. And if I zoom in... Microphone's got to go from there. <clears throat> so, microphone is going to have to go on the desk. Hopefully, that's not going to cause issues. too much. 
Okay, what does that look like? That's that's usable, isn't it? As a camera? Yeah, that's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad. Hi Paul, how are you? You got the chance to watch for a while and you're faffing. Hello, by the way. Thank you very much, Paul. I am faffing because it's a little bit of a, a problem here, so um I'm struggling with cameras and the software here today because it's not some not going to plan. I've got a camera down and it's it's my main camera, it's causing me issues, Paul, that's the problem. So I think you can see the board hopefully. Let's get rid of the bottom case. And get rid of the rubber uh, for the time being. Keep that on hand just in case we need it for mic isolation. Right, let's get to work. Let's get this. Let's get this done. I've got the R24 to do, and, it, and I'm hoping to do both today. So, bear with me, and we'll see if we can get both done. So, I'm just going to take this um, heat shield off again of the. Voltage regulator. No, it's not a voltage regulator. Actually, it is the voltage regulator, but uh, the word I was looking for was some. Um, was bridge rectifier. So let's take this. I mean, why on earth have they put a jumper wire from one side of the board to the other? Look, is that, is that bad design, or. You know, am I. Am I missing something? I don't know, that seems seems bad design to me. It looks like they've missed a track off, so they put this in to jump it. I'm not sure why. So yeah, say so I've got to put some um, thermal compound on there. I want to take this this piece off. Do I want to take that piece off? No, can I get away with that? I don't necessarily need to take this piece off, I need to take this bit here off. It looks like this is isolated with um, washers as well. Let's go with the overhead camera. See what that looks like. Oh, that's a nice view, isn't it? Hey, Tony! <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Star. That's some more beer money for me. Oh, I can pop down the, down, down the pub now. I wouldn't do that because I'd have to go, wouldn't I? Replacement camera. Wid widded that Weber. <laughs> Getting widded the Weber. Yeah, it is a bit of a bodge wire, isn't it? Let's just change this um, <coughs> microphone because if I'm not looking at it, it's. Um, if I put it to there, that should. That should pick my voice up better, hopefully. <coughs> I don't have to look at the microphone then. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bodge wire, isn't it? I don't know. I mean, wait, maybe later boards, later revisions had didn't have this. I don't know. It sort of seems jammed in there, doesn't it? It's not. It ain't right. Let's pop it onto the overhead camera. You see a bit better. Yeah, it's just jammed in underneath this shield. Um, this is an SH three two three SC. I wonder if that's the same as the regulators that I've just had delivered today. Because they actually came in the post this morning. Did I bring them up or did I leave them downstairs? So that's the regulator there, you can't really see it very well because of the light angle. There you are. And it says SH323C. I don't know if these are the same ones. You guys will know better than me, but I did them. Um, These are LM 
323Ks. It looks to me like it's the same package. And these are ST LM323K, and that's an SH323SC. Ooh. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that the same thing? I'm going to need to do a bit of Googling, people. SH323SC versus LM323K. Is it the same beast? Let's just see what my... Um, My component tester makes of it a minute. Oop, wee Let's see what the old component tester makes of it. <clears throat> Take the get the glare off of it. <laughs> of course there's a component there. You're supposed to be able to check voltage regulators. What are you doing? Just check it without that. So I reckon there's a Zener diode without the body connected, but I'm sure the body makes connection somehow, doesn't it? I won't measure those then. <coughs> I usually will will measure voltage regulators. Um, it's not broken, George, but uh, apparently it does it does give them a bit more reliability if you change them. I think I'm going to need to do a bit more research on that before I uh, go ahead and change that one. So I'm going to leave that one for a minute. But um, if it is the right one, it will get changed. So if it uh, if it is the correct one, I will be changing it. Again, it's just future proofing it, George. Really, yeah, it's not broke, but um, it is one of the one of the main failure points of these is is that voltage regulator. So. If I can preempt that and um, stop it happening, then I'm going to do that. So we'll leave that one for a minute. Let's disconnect this cartridge port and uh, get that horrible bit of sticky label out. That's um, causing a problem. Stupid wire is stopping that coming out. Oh, come on, why is that wire in there? Uh, no, I've got to take that off as well. I've got to take this one off as well, otherwise I'm not going to get to the heat sink underneath. We've got that 5 mil, so we've got 5.5. 5.5. 5. 
Again, these are Weira nut drivers. I've had these for quite a while now. I've got some um, So I'm going to have to desolder this one to get this off. Hmm. So I can't get this out without getting this off. So it's coming off. These are coming off, people. It's only two um, terminals. So, does any, can anybody let me know if, if this is the same one? If I've got the right regulator, I'm sure I have. But uh, if anybody does know, it'd be great. Thanks, um, Nick. Petronics seems to think it is. Paul is saying the body is. Help the desoldering because desoldering some of this old stuff is a bit of a nightmare. I've done with my wall solder. I have got a new fan for this as well to shut the thing up. It does my head in this um, desoldering tool. I'm just going to run a fresh bit of solder in there while I'm waiting for the um, desoldering tool to heat up. Hopefully that will just help me get rid of it. <clears throat> so this is the two terminals. It can only go one way round. One way wound. It can only go one way wound. So I am going to... Um, change this one now that I've got to, got to take it out anyway. Everything's caught up with everything. My corkscrew and bottle opener have decided they love the desoldering tool. So let's, let's see if we can get that out. Seems to be up to temperature, but um, and these boards are through hole boards and they are notoriously difficult to desolder, so uh, something like this does help quite a lot. nasty wire out the way a minute.
shut that up for a minute. So there's the old, um, you can see that the, let's just get the overhead camera back on. You can see that all the, the thermal compound, well, what little thermal compound, compound, compound it had has just had it. So you certainly need a, a bit more thermal compound on it than that. And that was the thermal compound for the bridge rectifier. Again, all dry and horrible. And this is the um, bit of foam or something that was underneath that was catching on on the um, cartridge. And I don't know what to replace that with. It's really, it's a really thin foam, but nothing like that. Of course, the the actual cassettes. The I keep calling them cassettes. The cartridges go in sort of that way. I suppose they only go in like that far. That's why we've got a ridge there. So the bit that they actually push against is all worn away now. I'm going to replace that with, come on Graham, you must have something here that's, that's like that. I haven't got any thin foam tape, I've got some Kapton tape. Anybody got any ideas for replacing that then? Be interesting. Hey Keith, afternoon, how are you? Keith Brandall. Wash the board in the sink, George, you think so? Gary, how you doing? Hi Gary. <laughs> Welcome mate. I'm a little I'm up the corner here, a little little man up in the corner. Can it play Duke Nukem yet? I don't think Duke Nukem was available for the um, VIC-20. I'm not sure if it was the Commodore 64 or the Amiga Duke Nukem. Number plate fixing pad, that might do it. Yeah. Brett saying, just leave one side with the plagy on. Number plate fix. I don't think I've got anything like that, Brett. Um, just have a quick look up in my tape stash. See, that's too thick unless I shave some off. Um, just normal double sided. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to sort that. I don't know what to do with that. Ah, plastic, okay. Yeah, I know what you mean, um, Brett, by the number plate tape. I think I might have to get some of that. Unless you've got a spare, <coughs> <coughs> spare few inches you can send me. my miscellaneous uh, tub, you never know. You never know what you find in the miscellaneous tub. Oh, there you go, I've got non-slip feet there that I didn't realise I had. I've got some felt pads. I wonder if these would um, be any good in there, do you think? I 
did have some uh, complete felt fixing kit somewhere as well that had big a big sheet of uh, removable sticky pads. Oh, that's gone too. Let's look at my glue tray. Headlight reflector repair kit. <laughs> I've got everything here but what I need really. Velcro. I wonder if the non hook side of the Velcro might do it. What's that? Universal glue. I don't want glue. Hmm. I have got something somewhere that might do it, but I don't know where it is. might do it though. Two of those side by side. It's going to be better than a chewed up bit of nothing, isn't it? pretty much had it. I think if I stick two of those pads side by side it is sort of angled as well so it's purely a buffer I suppose to stop the tape to stop it rattling or to stop it scratching the actual uh, body of the thing. So let's use uh, the spudger that Mr Cody's very kindly gave me. Catch the edge of this Don't want to scratch it if I can help it. Let's see if a bit of alcohol on that will free it up. Free up the glue. Let's let that soak in for a second and catch up with the chat. Minds think alike, Brett. IPA is on there. Let's let it go in for a minute. Let's give it a bit of a squidge around with a plastic spoon. Mm, IPA is not really getting off that brilliant. Roads. Another bit of a squirt. Just getting it off slowly, slowly. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. It's good adhesive, whatever they've used. be able to get some of this tape. If, if you look at a lot of battery compartments have got weird size tape in them and there's not a lot we can use these days but I'm sure somebody somewhere sells single sided foam tape. So number plate tape might do but it's got it's double sided not single sided so if, it, if you rub off the outer coat which you would eventually do pushing cartridges in and out will um, eventually wear it out. Mm. 
Nearly there. Nearly there. It's good stuff, this glue, I'll tell you. Whatever they've used. I'm on chicken and dog duty as well today, so normally when uh, when I come on of a Sunday, Mrs. Cruncher's home and she, she'll sort the dogs out and the chickens, but I'm going to have to do that today, so at some stage I'm going to have to nip off for five minutes. glue on this you bet your life it just won't stick to the new one. Right. So my idea is to just pop a couple of these on there just as a bit of a buffer. Whether the glue will be any good on these or not is another thing isn't it? side by side before I stick them down fully. There. <laughs> Got a bit of sticky from the other one stuck on it look. I think they're pretty pretty well stuck. Still got a load of this gunk from the other ones on it though, look. Didn't get that off very well, did I? Ah. That's okay actually. That's okay. Rub the rest of this um, glue residue off around the edges. <coughs> Clean the frame off as well, as that's filthy. will still go in with that stuff on but it's better than having none on I'm sure just don't like the uh, anyway let's get back onto the main screen this as well is pretty filthy let's not use that let's use a cloth let's just fall into bits where's my cloth Isopropyl on this cloth. Just give this a wipe over to get rid of all the dust. Let's also get rid of that old um, heat sink compound. So we need to redo that. That's that bit. Same with this. Isopropyl does get that heat heat sink compound off quite nicely, actually. There, it's like new now. Right, we need to look up this this chip just to make 100% sure that my new one is compatible with the old one. So let me, um, hey, racing, racing, racing demon, how are you? 
You didn't know I was on today. I did put a notification out, Mike, but I know it's um, it's a bit different to the norm today, isn't it? So let me just Google this one. So this is an SH, SH323, SC. Excuse me. Okay, so the SH three, sorry, two three two. We got two three two there. They've they've, <laughs> they've mistyped that. So this is the sheet for this one, which is an SH323. It's a 5 amp, 3 volt voltage regulator. Well, the other one, I'm sure, says uh, variable voltage. Fifty watt power dissipation. I don't know if you can read that or not. Um, it's not giving me the option to zoom in on this. Zoom in on down here. That's better. Yeah, so they've got <laughs> it's SH three two three look, and on the data sheet they put SH two three two. Dear oh dear. So three amp three amp output current. All pin for pin ah here we go. All pin for pin compatible with the LM three two three. So does that answer my question? It's all pin for pin compatible with the LM three two three. Have I answered my own question there, people? Check LM three two three K. Right, use this one by ST in it. Yeah, ST. The LM three two three K data sheet. So this is the LM three two three data sheet, three terminal three amp. It says adjustable voltage regulators. I put current minimum input voltage. We've got nine volts in. Oh, they've got a pre preset 5 volt output and a load driving 3 amp. Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me.
Yeah, I'm not sure, people. I'm still not 100% sure on that. I don't want to ruin the board, do I? Okay, Georgia said it's the same. Yeah, I've got draft excluder pool, but it's too thick. Hi, David, how are you? Bonus screener today. <laughs> early. I'm a day early. I am still working on the Vic, Mike, but I have got the R R20, R23 in... No, R24 on the sidelines. The new one is shinier, that's for sure. Okay, well, I've got this metal work out of the way. I can set to on cleaning this disgustingly filthy board. Um, it is filthy, isn't it? I'm just going to have to go at it. I think I'm going to go with it with uh, isopropyl. I suppose I could just soapy water it, but uh, then I'll end up with water in everything when I. So I think we're going to go isopropyl mad on it. Fire. <laughs> George, you in the fire. I keep calling that a voltage regulator. It's not a voltage regulator. It's a, <laughs> it's a bridge rectifier, Graham. Oh, this board is filthy. Um, take this in and um, stick it under the shower and shower it off you know is that likely to cause me any issues there's nothing it can really get into is there can't really get into it with the isopropyl very well I can get into it but I can't get in there with anything to wipe it off Is a dishwasher a good idea for one of these boards? Sounds dodgy to me, but I have heard of people putting boards in dishwashers before. Now, all 
I'm doing is moving all the muck around the board really. Anything in those little trimmer caps? Do I? Oh, just moved that one. Up. Spray the IPA. <laughs> got the worst of it off to be fair. Yeah, that's got a fair bit off. Let's just do it this way up as well. Let's go with these ram chips. Good for you, this stuff. Breathe that in. Goat wants in on the action.
just want to get to the bits that I can't get to once that stupid shield assembly is back on it. Well, that's, um, that's a lot better straight away. I mean, there's still a little bit of dust in it in places, but I've got this area clean, which was my main aim. So I'm going to stick the desoldering tool on again to clear myself up here while I'm doing that. There's so few caps on here, it'd be silly to, to do this much to it and not um, change these. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps on the thing, eight. <coughs> Some of these are in the video section as well, so um, it'd be worth getting them out while we're in here. So this is the replacement uh, 4700 microfarad at 16 volt. So it's um, it's a bit smaller than the original. It's the same diameter, but um, a little bit smaller. Quite an expensive cap when you get up to that size as well. How are we doing on chat anyway? While everything's um, heating up here. What are we doing? Oh, I've been busy. Two hours in, Harvey, yeah. We don't mess about here, mate. <coughs> I'm gonna need to... Is it four o'clock? Half past four. Oh, dear. We have to get some alcohol free in, in the house because I ain't got any other beer left. I need Mrs. Cruncher to come home from work, drop me some beer off and then go back in again. See that happening though, can you? In fact, she probably would just to kill some time. <sighs> Alcohol free. Cheers, everybody. I don't know whether you've, you've gone off topic here. I think you've lost me. <coughs> you've lost me. What have you got hidden? I've not got the wine yet, Sean. I needed something thirst quenching. Let's do the biggie first then. <clears throat> Which 
which is across those two terminals by the looks of it. So again, I'm just going to feed a little bit of um, fresh solar in that, so a little drop of flux on it as well. Seems to be dropping the solder back on it. I don't know if suction is working very well on this. It's just. Yep. <clears throat> this is the trouble with through hole components, they are tricky as hell to um, desolder. So that one is, I've desoldered the back end, but it's not even touched the front. Tell you what, through hole stuff. If you've done any um, through hole soldering, desoldering, it's a pain. Oh, that was gone. Soldered. It's got glare from this light, isn't it? I can't do a lot about that, really. I want this. Uh, that's, that's a bit better. Let's give that a quick clean up underneath because it's uh, filthy. Our new one in. So I'm going to try and get this looking fairly nice. Let's just do a bit of faffing around. So work right that way up really with the. So I'm just going to bend the legs down. Sure.
<coughs> so a little bit of flux to help us, especially with a through hole board, it will help your soldering. Cap height is exactly the same, um, Brett. So once you've done a through hole joint, you need to have a look at the other side of the board to make sure the solders flow through. Well, the positive one has, but the negative hasn't. So we're just going to need to um, put some more on this one. Put a bit more heat on it because it's going to be a big ground plane. That. Let's heat that up a little bit more. seen that pop there. Still not gone through brilliantly to be fair. Let's just snip the um, leg off. That's acting as like a bit of a ground plane in, in itself. Let's come through now. <coughs> Just touch it up on this side as well. That's better. There we go. So yeah, Brett was asking about the height. It's the same height, Brett. There's no, no difference in height. It's, it's difficult to see from that camera angle. But if I bring you in on the other camera, So it is the same height there. Identical. So again, I think we did test the uh, Nietzsche con, didn't we, before? And it did read OK. I don't know what's gone there. Oh, it's there. So we'll try it on the ESR meter. I'm pretty sure we did this last time though and it was alright. But like I say, it's, it's about future proofing it really, so... So it's reading... 46.30, which is pretty good for 4700 and very low ESR. So, yes. But you don't know what the leakage is like, that doesn't test leakage. Bring a nice new Vichy cap in there now. So let's just do the sort of maintenance as we go. And uh, just get a little flux. <coughs> As I say, I've got two of these, so one I, I will be keeping, and the other one I shall sell on. I'm not sure which which yet, because I haven't looked at the other one. But I won't bore you in a live stream with, with the other one, unless you want me to. I don't like the look of that solder very much there. That's a bit blobby. Let's take a little bit of that off. It's like blobby solder. That sort of reeks of someone's been in here type thing, doesn't it? 
から。Better. It's nice when someone looks in on something that you've done and can't um, can't see that anybody's been in there. A lot of that is cleaning up, though. If you don't clean the board up, then um, yeah, there we are. Done. And the next one. Let's do this one next. We're just here. What blue LED now? <laughs> what we're saying, IPA is damaging to the body, especially to the eyesight. Woo! Budget, how are you? Welcome, mate. Didn't see you pop in there. Glad you're with us, mate. I feel safer now. I feel safer. <laughs> Give me alcohol free beer. Look, Radio Cruncher beer. Oh dear. Alcohol free. Whatever next. What is the world coming to? Right, let's get this one off then. Once again, I'm just going to uh, pop a little bit of flux on it. Because these are a pain in the neck, these double sided boards. Those of you that have worked on them will know, especially the negatives, because they're usually connected to massive ground planes. They're just sandwiched in the board. Some of them can be three layer boards. I don't know how many layers this is. I think it's probably two. It might be a three layer board. It might have the ground sandwiched. No, I don't think it is. I think it's just two layer. Double sided. Right, let's see if we can get this one out. That one looks good. Ain't moving yet. Again, you don't want to brush it and pull them because you'll rip the traces. We do not want to be ripping traces on this old board. What's that? That's not a niche. Yes, it is. 100 microfarad, 16 volts. <laughs> the voice of Propo. Bit of solder on top of the board, so let's get a bit of braid. Smaller bit of braid, there's a massive bit of braid last time. Let's get a bit of braid and just clean that up. So, if anybody's just joined us, we're working on a Commodore, or 
I'm working on a Commodore Fit 20 board. No computer from around about 1981. That's about it. Let's look at the other side. Yeah, reworking a through-hole board is not much fun. Not much fun, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Right. 116 volts. I don't think I've got 16, but I've probably got a 25. I don't know, I've got 116. Yeah, 116. So I'm not rating these. We're at 85 degrees, these are 100 degree rated. Actually, that's a bit chunkier, isn't it? Let's put a bigger one in again. Yeah, th 35, <laughs> 35 degree one has got the same uh, pin out, so we're going to use the 35 degree rated one. <clears throat> Just this, this hole has decided to fill itself back up again. It's clear from the bottom. Where's my braid? Way For some more ISO. Thank you very much, Mike. Great stuff. Where's my camera? Cheers, mate. Thanks for the super chat. Yeah, now that's a good tip, um, Budget. Budget legged is a good tip. The other thing that um, works well with through hole if you get really stuck, especially when you're looking at ICs, is um, to actually solder suck through the um, solder suck through the braid. That that works wonders as well. Done that many times, right? That's dead. That's sorted now. On that. It's always the negative on these because there's a massive rain plane in there. You can't see it, but um, Again, you can't really tell if it's gone all the way through. It looks like it has. It's 
give it a little bit more. to go. Snip those off. <clears throat> more isopropyl. You had a small win on the nags, Mike, did you? <laughs> well done, mate. Not very often, is it? You win on the old horses these days. Well, I suppose it is. My dad used to, well, I still does like a little bit of a flutter on the horses. He did have a bit of a winning streak at one stage. It's like all winning streaks, isn't it? It um, does eventually disappear. Right, that's two down. So now got this big cluster in here, which is a bit, a bit scary, a bit scary. Voodoo Ranger, Doug, nine percent. Only luck, was it? Grand National was about all I uh, used to do. Hopefully these caps will be a little bit kinder to me. Just trying to work out on the board where they are. I think that's those two there. It's got to be these two just up here. I don't know how well you can see this. I hope you can see it all right. It's difficult to judge what you're actually viewing. But uh, when I've played it back previously, it always does seem to be pretty good. So that's these two. <clears throat> what I wouldn't mind actually, and what, what I might put the um the Super Chats too is they, they make uh, what's called a penultimate cartridge for these, which um, is a really, really nice bit of kit. It's got a load of games on it. It's also got some, um, I think, 35, 35k of RAM on it as well. gone. <clears throat> so yeah, I think the next um, the next purchase from from you chaps, if I kindly given me the super chats, is uh, is that cartridge. I'll pop that up on the screen in a minute. Okay, so negative is to the right. This is 16 microfarads, 10 volts. Negative to the right. It's not marked on this board, on this part of the board, should I say? Sure then, Derek. Thanks for the super chat, mate. What are you going out tonight on the knives and forks with Jill? Have a good night, mate. Have a good meal. Catch up with you soon, Derek. Thanks again, mate. It's a surprise what you find when you... Um Start researching these things. There's loads of stuff been developed for the um, Fit 20. 
surprisingly, being it's, it's a computer that didn't really stay out for that long. It was it was very soon vastly overshadowed by the Commodore 64, but you know, of course it's like anything, as soon as the new the new one comes out, you've got to have it. I mean it's a little bit, a bit like PCs. Early days of PCs, they um they used to like bring out another one, a better processor every year almost, and, and they were like vastly better than the previous one. I think they're not that different these days, but um, back in the early days of PCs you had to have the latest one. So one of the things with the um, <coughs> With the capacitors, you can't see really if the solder goes right the way through. So I'm going to bump my solder and iron temperature up a bit. I'm going to bump it up to 350. I normally keep it right 330. So bump it up 20 degrees. I would say thousands, Brett, I would think. Uh, they do do SD adapters, uh, Spanky. Well, I I picked up something this last week. Somebody, one of my um, viewers last week, and I don't know, it might have been Bjorn, mentioned um, a system that runs on a Raspberry Pi. So I've actually got that particular system to try and build. So I'm going to have a go at that. But I think the penultimate cartridge for a normal someone that doesn't want to mess with stuff is, is the way forward, definitely. Where's that? Down there. Let's get rid of the flux on that. Let's get the next one, which says a transistor, and then there's another one. So that's this one here. Let's get these done, and then I'll pop that penultimate cartridge up on the screen for you to have a look at. Not cheap. I think it comes in at 57 quid plus of postage at the moment. But when you see what's on it and what it would cost you to buy all the individual cartridges, I think it's worth it. So once again, it's the earth that's um, taking its time to come out. some IC sockets on this board.
another 10 at 16 volts. So let's um, get the excess out with a bit of braid again and some flux. It's not going to be nice to us this time, is it? Nope. <laughs> These are a pain in the neck to work on, so the positive's free, but the negative is um, decided to fill himself up again. There we go. Clear. <clears throat> Mrs. Demon likes banana milkshakes. <laughs> what's, what's that about, Mike? Am I missing something? Mrs. Cruncher likes German wine. She loves German wine actually. She doesn't like it, she loves it. Strange, isn't it? All the wine she could drink, she likes the German stuff. <clears throat> Another bit of flux on that to help with the long. So either myself or somebody else is going to get a rather nicely um, restored Fit 20 here by the looks of it. Looking good. So one, two, three, four left to do. Down to meet me again as usual. Vic, why did you win it? Hey, Resonator, how are you, mate? Welcome. We're doing all right. We're doing all right, Resonator. I think. That one came out a bit better. Oh, it dropped right out. That one, that. Whoa. Very keen. What's that? Uh, 22 microfarad at 16 volts. 22 microfarad this time.
to it 16 volts and the negative is the other way around on that one. This could be a radio, it could be anything, couldn't it, that I'm working on. So it's the same same principle, whatever you're working on, really, isn't it? Although these through-hole boards are... Um, not my favourite things to work on. The only one that I can't get nice and neat is the one jammed in behind that transistor there. Actually, I might be able to. Yeah. It's a bit nicer. Yeah. Let's try that one. Lost where, where I've done it. There. there we are. Okay. <clears throat> Bigger one there. There. It's another 100 microfarad by the looks of it. So the idea is that we're going to actually be playing this um, this computer tomorrow. So we've got some friends coming around for the evening. And, um, this is very much on the agenda. So negative is to my right now. Another 100 at 16 volts, yes it is. <coughs> Alright Spanky, catch you in a minute. <coughs> <coughs> Bigger one there, what's that? 50 volts. That'll do us. 100 volts for 50 volts. We're just looking for a bigger pin out, that was all. I've run out of the niche cons that I have, so I've got to put that on my list again, haven't I? More. 
more odd ordering from suppliers. Seem to be forever doing RSCPC orders at the moment. Let's just put some solder in this. Um, negative one a bit more heat just to make sure the solda flows right the way through to the other side usually when it sort of like pops like a bubble you know it's gone through where was it huh, that's where I was now Looking good so far. We'll test these caps in a minute just to see if any of them were uh, off. As I say, they are an itchy pond, so it's un unlikely. This this might give the set another 40 years, you never know. I always worry when they start um, putting caps in different colours, look. So you see this is yellow, and this one down here is yellow. Um, I'm just wondering if it's a different series of, of caps that are high quality or meant for a specific job. I mean, they're 50, 50 volt 1 microfarad, so um, whether that was the only colour they had or whether it's a specific um, grade of cap, I don't know. There to clean up as I'm going along. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a different series. I know switch mode power supplies use slightly different caps that are capable of operating at different frequencies or something. Like that. I don't know. Let's ch just catch up with the chat. I mean, I've been, been ignoring the chat for a minute. I'm going to swig me of me alcohol free and I'll go down and get some wine then. Yes, they are, Brett. Yeah, they are, which um, I've, I've just discovered that. Square for positive and round for negative. It's um, unusual, isn't it? She'll grow out of it. She won't, Tony. She loves the stuff. <laughs> they're not Chong's. They're Panasonic's and um, Nichicon's. Are they yellow because they use cheese as a dielectric? Now, come on, Theo. <laughs> uh, no, they're all Nichicon's. They're all Nichicon's. I hope it does. I hope Vic does treat me well after this. Okay. Let's get a yellowy out then. One one microfarad. Just here. Just our How are we doing? Five o'clock. What do I come on? Two, three hours. Yeah, I have to let the dogs out in a minute. For a wee. Can't leave the poor old puppies. 
too long without having a wee. Yeah, so um, this, I'll show you this now because I've got. See if I can uh, zoom in. Where am I? I'm here. So I need to be about there. I'll zoom you in on this. Show you what Brett was talking about with the um, square and the round holes. You see that C16? That's the one I've just desoldered. square hole is a positive and the round hole is a negative. Can you see there's a little square pad? It's not a square hole, it's a square pad. It's the positive and the uh, round, one, round pad is the negative. You think I forgot about the draw? The draw is still on my mind, Tony. The draw is still on my mind, and it may happen today. It may happen today. It depends if we can get it going or not. I could do the draw. They're both ones, aren't they, I think? I could do the draw, and then I'll, I'll pressurise myself then to get them done in time, and I've got a lot on at the moment, so I want to try and do all the work on the live stream so people can see what they're getting with the radio. Okay, so the, I've got one microfarad 50 volt Nichipon going back in. Um, again, 105 degrees uh, rated. These are only 85. Still Nichipons, mind you, but let's get that the right way around then. Um, a message from Mrs. Cruncher. Don't like about these cotton buds. They leave bits of cotton everywhere, don't they? Okay, just one left. Just this little one here on his own. Little baby one. And where is it? It's.
the dogs are barking do this one and then uh, I'm going to nip down and let them out and get myself a, a drop of wine to sample just make sure that uh, it's okay because um, you know wine, wine can go off I just need to make sure that it's okay to drink <laughs> that's my excuse lucky with these to be honest there's no no issues with any of the traces Also means we can turn that noisy desoldering tool off. I'm sure that's better for your ears, isn't it? Oh, it does my head in that thing. As I say, I have got a new fan for it here somewhere, which I tried running over with the chair just there. Yeah, there. So I've got a new fan for the um, desoldering tool, 24 volt one instead of the, I think it's 12 volt one fitting in it. Pretty manky. Let's get another one of those. good those just heat them up again just I think what I've cut them off they just don't look I need that's better yeah so really now the only reason I can see where I've where I've um, soldered is because it's slightly shinier solder than all the rest of it. Apart from that, you wouldn't know I've been in there, to be fair. So there we are. That's all my lovely caps done. What's, the, what's it like? Okay, so it's dark now. Am I going to remake all the other joints on the board? Um. No. <laughs> right, who have we got? Mervyn, how are you? What flux do you use? I think, yeah, Paul's just um, shown you that, Wharton's flux. Uh, the other stuff I use is the gel flux, <coughs> which is this Amtec. And uh, this one is actually gone now, done. So I need to thin that one. 
and get a fresh one out. But um, right, that's a recap done. What I'm going to do in a minute, if oh, excuse me, if it's all right with you guys, I'm going to leave you uh, looking at the board and my messy bench that is always messy as soon as I do anything. I'm going to go and put the chickens away and just let the dogs out for a week and get some wine. So uh, let's write you a little note. Because the poor, poor puppies are um, down there crying. They need to be let out for a wee. Alright, I'm coming. So let's leave you with a little note. Back in 10 minutes, people. I haven't got any music to play you in the meantime, but um, I've got to do the dogs and the chickens. So catch you in a sec.
Okay, I don't know if that was quite 10 minutes, but uh, I'm back. Hello. I'm back. Have you missed me? Have you missed me? <laughs> oh dear. Right, so what have you lot been up to while I've been gone then? Let me have a look and see what on the earth has been going on here. Okay, who have we got here? Who have we, we've got some more people come in. <laughs> right, you lot, what are you up to now? Um... I'm just catching up with the chat people a minute. Can I pull one of them big chips out? No. Check the resistors? No. Are you going to clean the sockets on the back? No. <laughs> snack too. I did forget the snacks, Brett, but I did eat lunch just before I came up, so I'm okay for a bit. Hi Andy, how are you? Oh, sorry about that, mate. You have, you have to make sure you click the bell. Hang on. My, uh... My camera's gone a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, it's because this one's it right in my head. That's better. <laughs> dear, oh dear. No, I'm not on tomorrow, Andy. I've, I'm on today instead, mate. I've uh, got people coming tomorrow, so uh, I've had to go on a day early. Seabass, very nice, Benji. Andy, we're um, we ju we've just recapped the Vic Twenty board, mate. We've done the LED on it, which was the wrong colour and shocking, and uh, now we've recapped it. Good morning to you, Wenlock. Posted photos on the group of a red hacker you had for had a present for my birthday. It's a dog. <laughs> You've had a red hacker dog for your birthday, have you? You changed a couple caps for me, did you? You reprogrammed the sound to sound like a goat. <laughs> oh dear. Let's um, have a look. See what the webcam's looking like. So yeah, this is the situation, Andy. As 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 we are. Cameras are lacking a bit today, but we have got um, we have got 19 crimes of the uprising ready to be corked with the Weera corkscrew. I'm going to go for for the Weera. Normally, I've got an easy corkscrew that um, that opens it for you, really. But I'm going to struggle and do it with the Weera one, being that I've got it and we're on the we're on the bench. I can tell I haven't done this for a while. I'm making right picks here of this, aren't I? There we go. There we go. He's going in. He's going in. I can't, I can't get you on camera. Here we go. Wait for the pop. Oh, God, I, know why. I know why I use the other type of cork screws now. Right, so that needed some strength. <clears throat> okay, any of you that are into wine, these 19 crimes, every um, every corkscrew's got a little message. Every corkscrew? What's going on a bit now, Graham? I bet we 
your finger back, fingernail back then. Every cork has got um, a little message on it, so let's have a look and see what this one is. Hey, Racing Demon Mike. That's very kind of you, mate. I did give him a little doggy uh, treat each. Let him out for a wee. So this is our cork, 19 crimes. So on on the cork you've got, this is crime number six. And it's stealing from furnished lodgings. <laughs> so crime number six is stealing from furnished lodgings. Quite fun, these. I've sort of taken a photo of all of the ones I've had, and um, there's some very weird and wonderful crimes. And it's it's all uh, to do with Australia, actually. The uprising pays homage to Australia's Rum Rebellion of 1808. So this is aged in rum barrels, and it's a very it's it's a very nice um, wine. Why did I jump off of the screen there? I don't know. I must have pushed the wrong. Oh yeah, of course. So I don't mind pouring it like that because it's not fizzy. So there we go, people. Nineteen crimes. The uprising. I'm going to stick the cork back in the top of that so I don't knock it over. It's um, it's a nice wine, that. So if anyone wants a recommendation, there we go. Very nice. So thank you very much, Racing Demon, for the uh, super chat there, for some demon doggy biscuits for the puppies. They've been good down there. Their telly even went off. They normally watch a telly while I'm while I'm at working, but their telly had gone off on the timer. Cheers, Brett. Catch you later, mate. Thanks for joining us today. I'm sure you heard that pop, Paul. <laughs> a beauty. I've broken my nail though. I've broken a nail doing that. Right, let's crack on with this board then. What else have we got to do? We've done the caps, heat sinks, but what I'll do probably is put this heat shield arrangement back on and solder this one back on before we start um, messing with heat, heat sink in the, mainly the VIC chip. wine somewhere where I'm not going to knock it over really. I had this bench immaculate the other day, absolutely immaculate. Then I cleaned the rest of the room up and piled everything up on the bench. Oh well. It's all good fun. Right, oh, I dropped me, dropped me peak tester in the water, that's probably not going to help it. sinking then. So I'm not sure I'm that keen on those pads yeah they're not they're not sticking on that brilliantly those pads. I don't think they're gonna last very long. To do something else to that, I think. But okay, so that one's got to go on. There are two washers. Washers underneath it. I don't know whether that's some botch that they did to, to space it out. If anyone's seen any of the the videos on the history of Commodore, they had a right old time back in the day. Really did. <laughs> but they had a hell of a time. Right. 
but yeah, well worth looking up the history of Commodore and some of the um, guys that used to work work for Commodore are on YouTube as well. Some of the old programmers and designers, they're, they're all out there. Okay, now I've shoved everything out of the way here just now. Those are the two screws that went up through there. They've um because they've got like they've got a solder pass underneath there, but whether they they found they were noisy or something. Let's do that other screw. House of Truth on about here. Here times two, what are we talking about? When you put when you put the back in ten minutes note on, viewers went up to a hundred and one. <laughs> Very good, Tony. <laughs> You're in for the long haul, SJD, are you? <laughs> Welcome, Keith. You're still there, still there, mate. I'm still going, Spanky. I don't mess about. I don't mess about, Spanky. Yeah, so it looks like that's a bit of an afterthought, that, um, those little gaskets. I think what they must have had some earthing issues with the cartridge bay, I suppose it's called. Again, I, I've got no experience of these, so I can't say that they're in, in any other VIC-20, because I've not took one apart yet. tighten these because it's only fiberglass. Don't know how much compression it'll take. So let's get our gaskets back in. That's our disc of drive bay in. Let's just try a let's just try a cartridge in there a minute just to make sure that I haven't caused any problems with those pads. In fact, the cartridge isn't even touching those pads. I suppose it's just in case someone pushes one in a bit roughly, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so now that looks good. Okay, next piece was this bit. So this is the one that's held in by our voltage regulator. So we need to get this horrible stuff in there. I hate this stuff, but it, it's got to be used if I can find it. Uh, what have I done with that? I'm looking for my heatsink compound now. There it is. Ugh.
heat sink compound. Oh, I know this is going to be horrible and it's going to get everywhere, it always does. <laughs> Let's get a, one of these things and spread it on with. It gets everywhere, this. It gets all over your hands, it's on everything you touch. But it does help heat transfer quite a lot. Yuck. Come on, don't play me up. There's one. Next thing we've got to guess is how much thermal transfer paste Graham's got on his fingers. That's <laughs> that's the next bit. Chris is back again. See if we can fit the other screw in. I've lost the hole now. Oh, there we are. It's because it's covered in gloopy thermal transfer paste. Well, that's nice and lined up first. Oh, hang on, we've got to get that stupid wire in here, haven't we? We get that wire in there. Let's not forget the crazy wire. How does it go that way around? Best put that in before I tighten it up because you can bet your, bet your life as soon as I tighten it up, it'll, uh, it'll make it impossible to get the wire in again. So I think we can safely say I've got enough thermal paste on that, don't you? I think I've done that to death. It's not running out of thermal paste anytime soon. That's that one. Mustn't forget to solder that on. 
Uh, so let's use some slightly thicker uh, cutters for that. <coughs> Bear with me. Just as well I put that top on that wine because you're just giving it a good kick in then. It's gonna get my uh, slightly beefier cutters, although th those would cut it. It's, um, maximum cut is a 1.6 mil. down a bit. two pegs. So let's snip those off fairly close to the board. Oh god they're tough. Whew. One. go one up voltage wreck right, let's find a cotton bud get through cotton buds quite well here aren't I just clean that off as well That's the uh, oh cool. The light certainly does blow this out, doesn't it? So that's my nice little voltage regulator done. Okay, let's uh, zoom back out a bit. So next we've got to put some heat seek compound on the heat seek heat seek heat sink compound on top of this and screw that back down over there so let's get the old blobby blobby mucky horribleness out again uh, every time I touch this I get more of it on me I've just got someone there as well now. <laughs> it gets everywhere this stuff. Right, so I'm just going to put some down on this um, bridge rectifier. I keep calling it a voltage regulator, but it's a bridge rectifier, but it does get pretty hot. find the screw for it. What have you done with the screw for the bridge rectifier, Graham? Good question. The 
hunt for the screw. Certainly it was here. Up, see if we can find this screw. This screw is loose. Oh, need some more paste on the edge of the regulator as that is where the heat transfers from. How do you mean, um, George? There's loads of it. Do you, you mean I need to put some around the rim? I think I've got enough on there, George. Compared to what was on, I mean, if you look at what was on there before, it was it was nothing. There's nothing on there. Oh, look, I've just put me, I just put my hand in it. Look, no. Oh, that's George's fault. I blame George for that. <laughs> okay. Got all over the board and all over my hand and my workbench. Need some more paste on the edge of the regulators. That is where the heat transfers from. I don't think I could put any more on there if I wanted to, George. It's, it's not. There's not any, any anywhere else to to put it on, really. I've just wiped some of that off of my hand, so I'm going to have to uh, put a bit more on that bridge now. Yeah, it's a fairly thin layer, Doug. As I say, there was um, there was very little on it on it before, and it does get really hot. This we certainly witnessed that last week when uh, when I fired it up. It was getting really hot in this area. So I've lost my screw. I've got a screw loose. Screw loose. But I'm not too worried about it for the minute. So I'm sure it will turn up when least expected. Now what have I done with it? At least I can find stuff if it drops on the floor now. Oops, let's have a a quick uh, swig of the wine while I work it out. Hi Brian. You think George is being sarcastic, do you? He's a sod, isn't he? Too much on there, but the trouble is, if, if you start wiping it, it just makes a hell of a mess. It makes a hell of a mess of it. <clears throat> Still trying to track down the screw. myself up here I'd probably find it. <clears throat> okay, come on screw your time's up. Where are you? There he is. Let's 
safely put away. for squareness. Ah. That did have some thread lock on that, so I'm going to do the same if I can find my thread lock. some of this thread lock here which I got from uh, the local German supermarket. So there you go. No expense spared. Thread locked right up with excess thread lock. Right, let's pop that one back on. Really strange that wire just floating around in there, isn't it? Not sure why, but there you are. That transistor looks upside down. <laughs> I think you needed another glass of wine, sure, not me. <laughs> So there we are, our heat sinks back on. Board's looking a lot cleaner, it's not perfect. Still some more bits I can see. Every time I look at it, I see some fresh gunge that I've got to get off. again. Okay. Right, that's the board done. There's a couple other bits that I want to do, but we'll pop it back in the um, case first. Let's get the base back. So one, 
two, three, four, seven screws. It's obviously not that container. It must be this one. Two, four, six, seven. Okay, so these are different lengths again. Why do they do this? I can't understand why they're all different lengths. I think somebody's mixed the screws up here, you know. Because we had some short ones. So many short ones have we got there? One, two, three short ones. Yeah, somebody's been in messing with this, and I've got some short ones in here, I'm sure of it. That's a short one. Say someone's been messing with the screws here, Harvey. I'm not really sure which ones go where. So let's try. We've got some longer ones and shorter ones, but all the all the holes are the same length. Just wonder whether they go up in underneath. You don't need to hammer these up mega tight, really. Hmm. These are the ones that came out of here. I'm just wondering whether somebody stuck the wrong screws back in here. Didn't we say that there was a load of screws missing? I think there was a load of screws missing, wasn't there? If I remember rightly. Because those are all too long, but what if I'd taken them out of then? Unless that's the cassette deck. I think we had some missing screws there, people. Let's have a look at these. Let's see if these would go in there. Oh, he's too big. No, they're too big. Slightly. See if I can find some screws. Get the old screw stash out. That's one I can see that'll fit. 
I think this did have some missing screws, didn't it, from, from memory. I don't know if anybody's memory's better than mine. That's the right size screwdriver for that one. That's another one that will fit. worth taking screws out of stuff before you throw it away people because they will come in useful One more then. Let's find one more screw. Is that one there? Might do it. That's a little bit tiny. Might do it there. Yep. There we go. All back in. Right. Done. Next thing we want to get our heat sinks. And I've got um I got these heat sinks that are turned up. I measured the width of the chip and ordered in some heat sinks. And these these weren't expensive. Just to get the other camera in. Yeah, I wonder if screwing that board in has made it <laughs> lopsided. Probably my desk, I expect. Anyway, the idea is to put these um, heat sinks on the main IC. What they call the VIC chip. So I'm going to put these um, heat sinks. They're actually different sizes, like they're on monkeys. So I could put them all on. There's no no reason to not to put all of them all on there. Is there really? Oh, they'll all fit. Four will fit on there. Look, quite nice. <laughs> Is that overkill? <laughs> let me just have a look at the. Um, let me just have a look at the chat a minute. Just catch up with what you lot are saying to me now. Where are we then?
Yes, a good one, SJD. We don't... Harvey, do we need to know your medical issues on here? <laughs> it's not a medical channel. <laughs> but thanks for letting us know, Harvey. <laughs> yeah, I've got the Ferrero Rocher ones that I've pinched off Mrs. Cruncher Theo, but I didn't think of leaving the inserts in them. Good call, that. <laughs> Your brain's gone. <laughs> Dr. Cruncher, yeah. Yeah, if you want any medical advice, um, don't come to me. Anyway, cheers everybody. <coughs> <coughs> Flipping a cough. It's never ending. Yeah, so that's the plan. I don't know whether to put them that way round or that way round. Which way dissipate heat better, do you think? That way or the other way? way around to put them. So somewhere I've got some tape because these didn't come with double sided tape on them so I had to get some therm thermal tape, thermally conductive tape for them. you believe it it's gone again isn't it? it's been beamed up and it all here to hand earlier nice and ready and the gremlins have, have just popped in and nicked it the gremlins have literally stolen it what, why would they need thermally conductive tape the gremlins they wouldn't need that Mm. Ah, <laughs> it was lurking on the bench all the time. Thermal conductive CPU. Hey, we'll do some radios in a minute. The Reverend Cruncher. God, I'll tell you what, smells, smells good. What they put in that? Does smell good that? Oh well. No, I don't think it does, Mike. It um, it conducts through the tape into the heat sink. That's that's the idea. So, anybody got any thoughts on uh, which way round these heat sinks should go then? They do seem to have a couple of different sizes. It would be nice to have them all the same size, wouldn't it? I suppose like that. Doesn't make no difference, I don't suppose, does it? So I have isopropyl that already, so 
Let's cut a bit of this tape off. I can find my scissors. Yeah. Tape is slightly smaller than the um, heat sinks. I think it's 12 mil tape and 14 mil heat sink, but. Um, It's going to be fun trying to line these up now, isn't it? Because I've got to have it neat. I'm not really pushing these down yet, I'm just eyeing them up. What do you reckon, people? That's got to be better, isn't it? I'll keep him nice and cool, that will. Look at that! What do you think? Super cooled. Loosen these. Um, I'm just going to loosen these screws a minute because this board is. Um, this one going down. This is a bit wonky. I'm just wondering whether it's the screws have made it a little bit twisted. Try and hold hold the board down while I tighten them up. <laughs> hold the case down, I mean. Yes, heat sinked right up now. Uh, Brian saying if you're using all four, make sure they're thermally connected to each other. Only center of chip gets hot. No, it's not upside down, George. George, you're being naughty today. George is being naughty. <laughs> George, naughty. Bad toad. So, yeah, they are all touching there, uh, Brian. They're really butted up tight together. So, um, I know that the heat um, does dissipate from the dye on the top. But um, when we tested it last week, the ends seemed to be getting really hot. Right. So 
so when we've got it all back together in a minute, I will check to um, see if there's any of the other chips getting hot. Because um, apparently there's a kernel chip, which I'm not sure if it's one of these two or this one. Can get quite hot as well. But at the moment, I think I'm, I'm really happy with that, the way that's gone. Really happy. So I think it's um, it's almost time to clear the bench down and get it plugged in. It's half past six. We might have time to crack on and get the um, get the R24 fixed if we can get this one up and running. We'll put this one to one side and we can pull, play with the R24 then. I did find <coughs> excuse me, a little space there. Let's move that one back out of the way. Catch up with a chat. Airflow is front to rear, so I've got those fins the right way around then, am I? If the air is coming through there, that way, then um, these fins are the right way around. If I put them the other way around, I suppose they'd have been blocking the airflow. But that should, I mean, end of the day, there's nothing wrong with that chip. They do get hot, but. Um, you know they they are also very prone to failure. They're very expensive to buy, and um, as I say, this particular one is no longer available. Not new anyway. I might pick up. I think there's a company somewhere doing them for about twenty six quid each. Twenty six pound for one chip. Oh, I don't know. Am I going to keep? I am going to keep one of these machines for sure. I will be hanging on to one of these for myself. Whether it's this one or the other one, I don't know. But they're both going to be done exactly the same. They'll both be top notch. I think that's my bench, not straight, not the. Um, yeah, that's my bench. <clears throat> right. Clear up time for me. That wine's going down rather nice though. Benji's off, is he? Oh, you got fish to fry. Alright, Benji. Catch you in a minute, mate. I was gonna say Benji Benji never leaves. <laughs> Benji's always with us. Benji's always in for the long haul. I think um, did ev every Christmas episode all the way through every episode I think so good on you Benji but I think there's a few people who did the whole lot didn't they are you all missing your daily live stream though that was good fun wasn't it just a shame I, I want very well really but <clears throat> I did enjoy doing them. Just could have gone on and on and on, couldn't I, really? It's never ending. <laughs> never ending. Still there, Benji? Yeah, Benji ain't leaving. Oh, cheers, Tony. Thanks, mate. Cheers for the super chats as well, Tony. Always appreciated, mate. Always appreciated. Good man. Right, as I say, I'm just having a bit of a clear up here at the moment. Just trying to make way, because we've got to get the old TV up here again. I have... 
what do I, I, I need to get some stuff done really people I do need to get some stuff done in preparation for tomorrow and one of the things I wanted to get done was I need to make up a composite cable for this so as I can use it on the main tally rather than this little tiny screen um, so I've either got to do it in the live stream or I've got to do it tomorrow but I know you all want to get on the R24 and I do as well so I'm not sure how to play it we need to check these caps on the old ESR meter so let's get that done another job out the way then so we've done the big niche con let's do the next sizes so that's the hundred microfarads some new clips for these. I need some good quality miniature gold plated clips to replace these this one of these ones that I've killed. And it wasn't um, anything to do with the original manufacturer because they are good quality clips. Okay so that's a hundred measuring ninety six point three two fine no problems with that one. I don't expect any of these to be bad to be fair. Another hundred Ninety-four. So they've gone slightly low, but that's that's well within tolerance. Ten. Something about ten microfarads. If any cap's going to go wrong, it's a ten microfarad. Okay, ESR is a little bit high on that one. One point six one. But again, not really an issue. These are all in in with the Vic chip, so these are quite important. That's a 22 microfarad measuring 21.92. You can't get much closer than that. Nichicon's good stuff, isn't it? These have stood the test of time, but they have got a limited life lifetime. That's why I've changed them. I think this is another 10. Again, ESR is creeping up on those 10s. We've got some 1s now. These, it does struggle measuring 1 microfarad caps sometimes. Okay, so 2.6, you're going to get a higher ESR on a lower value cap. Just how it is. I've tested enough of the things now. Yeah, so to be fair, they're Nichicon, they're really good quality caps, and none of those would have been an issue whatsoever. They might have been in a couple years, they might have been in six months, they might have been in a 12, you just never know. You never know. It's controversial just changing caps, but it's my machine, and uh, I want it to last, outlast me, which it will. Well, I assume it will now. At least the electrolytics are not going to fail anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> the electrolytics are going to be good. That's all right, Harvey. <laughs> I'm sure you caught up though, Harvey, didn't you? I do, I like that. It's something about heat sinks in there, you've just got to touch them. Not these things, but this is. Well, well and truly stuck as well, that ain't going anywhere <coughs> I got the um, heat sinks off of um, eBay I believe but the tape I got from Amazon so uh, if anyone wants to know where to get any of this just need to drop me a, drop me a message and I'll send you the link 
Okay, what else have we got to do? What else have we got to do, Graham? Come on, sort yourself out here. What's going on? We're clearing the bench, won't we? Oh, we've got another cartridge here, look, lurking. Star Battle. And uh, incidentally, a lot of these games, I didn't realise it at the time, they've actually got the original plastic on them. In fact, most of them did have. We just pop the corner up, look. So what looks like a really grubby, horrible game, I mean, if I put it under the overhead camera, you'll see better. So yeah, what looks like a really grubby, horrible game, look. Yeah. about this. One brand new Commodore Vic 20 cassette, look, look at that. Made in Hong Kong. So yeah, someone had left the tape on. Obviously the tape has protective film has just gone horrible with age. But underneath we've got a brand new cartridge. Excellent. I don't think we, we I'm not going to attempt the cassette deck today. I've decided that uh, the cassette deck will be for another day. Because the cassette deck's not majorly important, as long as we've got some decent cartridges that work, then we're good to go. Okay, right, Graham, sort yourself out. Got to get the goat sorted. Clear this space over here. So the platen cleaner for Theo's dentures. Going that to one side. Right, let's get a telly up. Let's get the old TV up. With the modulator still attached. the main screen. So this is the modular modulator that I had last week if you remember I took the cover off and we trimmed it to make it match the telly. Get rid of that horrible hissing noise. Well that's the one that I um, that's the one that I um, didn't recap this one. This is the one that I showed you the photos of. Had the dodgy wire on it, so I've, I have rewired this. That's all I've done to it, though. Nothing else. That's that one. We know the power supply is good because we tried that last time. So I don't think there's any need to wire that up to my fairy ank. We'll just pop it on the bench. Okay. Whee! <laughs> hey, Paul. Thank you very much, mate. I'm still going. Did someone give me some poo as well? <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Good man.
Cheers, Mike. Sorry, mate, I didn't see you popping off there. And thanks for the super chats as well. Really appreciate that. Space Invaders. Galaxians. Galax I love Galaxians. I was, I'm rubbish at it, but my all-time favourite, I suppose, and I don't know why, is um, Asteroids. I just love the Asteroids. So I don't know how the webcams... So, sorry about the angle of this. I'm going to probably need to do something different. Let me see if I can get the... Just take that... Take me off the picture-in-picture picture a minute. See if I can get the... Uh, the decent camera in on the screen. zoom in on this. Dogs are kicking off again. Let me just uh, mess with my camera angles. Okay, right, I've got a good picture there now. So, uh, hey Dave, live on a Saturday, computers again. Brain goes pop, yeah. But we are going to do radio in a minute. Never fear, radios are here. God, I wish I had my main camera. That's a real pain today. So, before we do anything, I need to, to top up the old wine. Yeah, I can remember you. I did. Uh, I watched your video, Benji, on Leeds with great interest, mate. Because um, I also uh, have got some old video recorders, and I was interested because you were talking about the leads were different for SVHS, I believe. I thought a Scott lead was a Scott lead, but obviously not. Right, let me think. Are we good to go? I don't need the drive in. I need a keyboard. So let's connect the keyboard up. So we've got our LED. See, which way up does the LED connector go? looking better in it it's looking like a proper computer now the back's even gripping on those um things let's uh, now i won't bother putting this should i put a screw in yeah, let's put one screw in there just to hold the case in know whether my uh, keyboard restoration was uh, any good now. Not quite got 
losing. So you can hear it straining. In Graham, Telly is not plugged in. <laughs> That's a goat moment. You fool, plug it in. No plug in, no work. Right. I've got to apologise with a band in. It's um, on my main camera. This doesn't happen, but um, the sync speed's obviously not right. So let's power it on. LEDs working. We. Oh, ho, ho. she only works. Wow. Me arrows work. Whoa. Can't really see that, can you? Let's uh, alter that camera settings a minute. Let's darken that down a bit. Syntax error. It doesn't doesn't know radio cruncher. Can't be right. <laughs> okay, so obviously the modulator's working fine now. Let's pop the power off because you're supposed to um, power it off each time you uh, connect one of these cartridges. Let me just. Give the keys a bit of a clean. The keys? The keys? Oh, you can tell it's getting late. Graham's starting to make boo boos. Just going to give the cartridge a quick clean off. So I'm just um, down here giving this a quick clean up. I'll just clean the, the uh, pads mainly. <sighs> any, any muck on my nice new keyboard. So let's pop that one in. Power up again. Okay, so we've got to move this. Uh, 
Um, can you shift it down? I thought you could move it up and down, but it looks like it's only left and right. Now I can't hear any sound at the moment. hear any sound so it says F1 or F3 to start alpha left so it's alpha left that one for right A is fire oh it is working I wasn't looking then, I wasn't looking. See, it's this one, isn't it, really? So if you can't see very well on that screen. I promise I'll get the other camera sorted for next week. get up in the loft and get um, a joystick down. Get away from me. When you look at the games we've got these days, this is really basic, isn't it? But it's just hours of fun messing with this. Come on. Ah! Yee! It's only clear them. Chip seems to be working fine, doesn't it? Is that um is that sharp? Yeah, it's a good bit of fun. So I've got another cartridge downstairs which I bought um Let me just put the wine to one side there. Bear with me, I'll go and grab that one, because I need to make sure this all works. Old Harvey, is it? <laughs> Hi, Paul, how are you? Cheers, Paul. Didn't see you pop in there, mate. But yeah, thank you very much for your um, live chat. Your live chat? Super chat, Eve. What was lost live chat? <laughs> You see the goat just lurking underneath the screen, look. 
Waiting for issues. He knows he's going to have some action. <laughs> right, so I'm going to um, pop another um, cartridge in. This one. Gorf. Now, uh, a mate of mine came around the other day and uh, he was well into the Vic Vic 20. It's his first ever computer. He had it as a kiddie, and uh, he said Gorf was his favourite game. So it's coming over tomorrow. So I thought I'd pick this one up on eBay for him to have a play with, so he can have a he can have a bit re relive his childhood. And if he doesn't get the highest score on it, then there's going to be something wrong in there. So let's see if it, we don't even know if it works yet. Oh, it does. So we've got to line the screen up again. So how do you get this screen on this one done then? Okay. Again, I don't know the. I don't know how it works. We seem to have a small screen though for some reason. There must be a way of getting it bigger. Or this is just a demo. Is it not working? This just looks like a bit of a demo at the moment, doesn't it? <clears throat> Go off. Yeah, not sure what's going on here. I should be able to hear this. Just have a quick look. He did say it was working. I did say this was working, but it's not working very well at the moment. Clean with a bit of isopropyl. Let's pop the uh I don't know how these cases come apart actually, I don't want to break it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to take that apart because I don't want to break the case. The problem with, with all these things is you, you haven't got the instructions anymore on how to run them. Gorf. Gorf moi land. <laughs> you like a bit of Gorf spanky, do you? 20 Commod Comm Commodore joysticks for a fiver. Is it, you've just bought that, have you? Yes, I did do the keys. Um, I did do the keys, and Andy. Um, if you have a look at the video earlier, if I just turn that round now, look. All the keys are done, mate. I've restored the whole keyboard. 
it's absolutely pristine now. Works a treat. I just want to see um, if there's anything I need to do to go off to get it working. Um, manual I've got a manual look at that I don't believe that I've actually got a manual on Gorf look at that you're gonna have to see this look at that <laughs> brilliant <laughs> right Hopefully you can all see that. Let's let's zoom in a bit a um, bit more. Power on your television, turn off your VIC twenty. Insert cartridge power on. Adjust your viewing screen by typing the, the CR by typing the C R S R key. Hmm, that doesn't seem to work. Launch launch your fighter and begin your mission by pushing the fire button on your joystick. Ooh, is it joystick only then, this game? Launch your fighter, uh, ignition and lift off. Proceed with the normal flight control. <laughs> this is amazing that someone's put this online still, isn't it? Other Vic 20 space action games. We've got Jupiter Lander. We've got Amiga Race as well. We've got Sargon 2 Chess. Hmm. Voodoo Castle, I think we've got. Park Cove, we've got. We've got lots of these games. So here's our. Uh, I'm going to have to print this out, aren't I? I'm going to have to print that. Let's just print that a minute while I'm here. Apologies for sticking my printing stuff all over your your um, computers. Excuse me, want to print that? Okay, people. So you know what this means, don't you? It means I'm going to have to go up into the loft and try and find my joystick. I'm sorry, but we need to test this. So I'm going to leave you with that to have a look through. So you better tell me all about it. Well, I nip up in the loft and see if I can find a joystick to try with this. So bear with me. I'll be right back. Hopefully you're on that screen. Yes, you are.
have one. I thought I had a couple, but I've just found one. It looks like Pro Extra. This is a proper micro switch joystick. This is a good quality one. This is a Competition Pro. Whoa! Let's get back on the main uh, screen then. You remember these people? A Competition Pro joystick, look. And this has got some extra bit of rubber in it. But it's got the micro switches in the bottom look still. I'll try to see which camera I'm looking at now. So it's got all the micro switches in the bottom look. Look at that. Classic. Competition Pro joystick. I could never afford one of those back in the day. I just had to have a little cheap one. I think it was it might have been Cheetah, something like that. Anyway, um, we haven't tried the uh, joystick port out. Now this is from an Amiga, but I'm sure the wiring is the same. Um, so that's control port. Is that the same as joystick port? We'll soon find out. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get back onto chat because um, where we were looking at Gorf um, instructions, I missed the chat. You reckon it's better, Keith, do you, since I've uh, messed it? Messed it? Messed it? Messed with it? Plug a tape deck in, I wish, Paul. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, they are getting popular, aren't they? Right, have I just turned my tully off? It's just decided to go off on its own. This is one of these ones where you working. Cool, they're a bit aggressive, aren't they? Oh, oh hang on, let's get you onto the main camera. Again, it's, oh jeez, it's, uh, chance against that, had I?
this joystick is stiff as hell. The rubber has gone a bit stiff on it, I think. Well, this is like a joystick that works, but um, I need to put a bit of platen. I'm rubbish at this. So you can't see the screen very well, can you? Well, I thought there'd be a way you could um, get the screen bigger, but I can't work out how to do it. Unless the screen ratio is, um, is small for that. Boil the rubber, softens it. Yeah, I need to. It's got a big lump of rubber in the actual um, joystick here. So I'm going to need to probably strip down and service the blooming joystick as well. Yeah, definitely gonna have to soften that up a bit. That's really, really stiff. It's a cracking joystick though. Competition Pro were one of the best joysticks about, weren't they? Have we got a switch on it? What's the switch for? I think we can say that works, can't we? So someone said try the tape deck. Who was who was brave enough to say that? Hey Morgan, how are you? See you drop in there, mate. Isn't it supposed to have suckers on the bottom? Um, no, I don't think so. You're thinking of the cheetahs, I think, aren't you? Saying that, it might, it might have done uh, actually, Theo. There is recesses there, but they look more like for um, sticky pads than suckers. But I think the Cheetah and the Quick Shot Pro, I think, had not Quick Shot Pro. Yeah, quick the Quick Shot, I think. This is a competition pro. There's a Quick Shot which had suckers, and the Cheetah, I think, did. This one's probably supposed to just have rubber pads on there, but it looks like they've come off. Those some um, rubber pads I've got. It's always a sort of thing you held in your hand, though, wasn't it? It wasn't. Uh, wasn't really a desktop thing, you always held it in your hand, didn't you? I can't remember. But it works, it works. Everything is working apart from the tape deck. And changing those um changing those capacitors is not gonna suddenly make the tape deck work. So unfortunately the tape deck is still US. So we've got um, we've got one other job to do with this, and that is to build a composite cable. Um, I had a delivery this morning from CPC. Eventually, should have been here a couple of days ago, really. But um, end of the day, it does say up to three days postage. Normally, the next day, but this took the three, the whole three days. So you can't complain. If it goes goes by UPS, it comes pretty much next day. If it goes by the post office, it, it can be 
random. So let's get my <coughs> CPC um, goodies out. There's five pin DIN plugs and there's five pin DIN plugs. These are proper five pin DIN plugs. Made by Reen. They got a metal body on them. Brilliant. These are nasty so what I've got what I've got to do I've got to make a lead so I can connect in on the telly um, you can't see on that camera really I put push the other camera down oh, it's not my play fool is it? Oh, there we go <clears throat> if I get those leads out of the way you can see I've got some audio and video on here. So if going through that, you can use the AV, um, the AV button, and you get a better picture than you do with um, this. Well, you basically you do away with this thing. That disappears altogether. The um, modulator. You don't need that. You just go straight into those two two plugs. So you basically, you need a five-pin DIN, and you need a couple phono plugs. And these are cheap, just pro signal cheap things. Nothing fancy. They're not even coloured, so I need to make sure when I um, wire them up that I put the right I put like a little band on the on the video one I'll stick just a yellow bit of heat shrink on the video one so that's that's the plan to build a little um, composite lead um, shall we do that now I'd like to do it now thanks Spanky and that's to be fair Spanky that is this keyboard is down to you because without you I wouldn't have been able to do this as nicely. Um, I know George has, now, George has now found my arrow key. He's found it lurking. But um, certainly didn't have the standoffs. Yes, I 3D printed some. But um, I would have had a job using those to be honest. I would have had to, to do a lot of work to get them working. There have been a lot of modifications to the original drawing, but that is absolutely lovely now. I'm really chuffed with how this has turned out. Really, really pleased. In fact, I couldn't have wished for better. I, I, when I looked at this originally, I thought there's absolutely no way I'm going to get that working. But to actually have it working and playing games is amazing. Sorry I can't have a camera on me because I've got the, the, the two cameras lined up on the telly at the moment. You don't mind if I do, Theo. Oh, Morgan, what's up, mate? Sorry to hear that. No, they are not. That is the cheap brand from New Trick. Proper ones are New Trick branded. Yes, I know, George, but these are a damn sight better than the cheap plasticky ones, mate. That's what I was trying to say. You know, end of the day, you can. Well, I can't even buy those cheap plasticky things. Are you saying that, that that's as good as that, George? Surely not. You know, this is all metal bodied. You know, New Reen is a brand of New Trick. New Trick and Reen is good stuff. <laughs> Sp 
Spanky saying, if, if you let me know the pinouts so you can make one too, crack on with it. <laughs> Let's crack on with it then. Let's crack on. Let's um, power everything down and get the, uh, the nicely restored Fit 20 off the bench a minute. Okay, Vic 20 off the bench. Let's turn that tally off for a minute. Get out of the way. Let's bring our, bring our cheap rubbish. As George is saying, our rubbish old ream connectors in. green rubbish <clears throat> so this is our five pin din All metal shell, gold plated pins, and that's just the securing um, to secure that into there. So that is that is nice. I don't know what George is on about, but um, he's a he's a reen hater. <clears throat> so that is a good quality connector. Right, I just need to pull it back out <laughs> out there now because it is quite a good fit in there. <laughs> Strain relief on the cable as well. You know, I think I think that's a good quality connector. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. So we need to find a couple uh, leads. So there's going to be lots of banging and bashing now. Where I go and go into my lead stash, see if we can find a couple uh, suitable shielded leads. No space, people. I need a bigger workshop. But somewhere I've got some shotgun wire which will work perfect for this. But as usual, it's right down the bottom. Isn't it? That's it. As you can hear, stuff falling around everywhere. Now this should work quite nicely. Uh, this is high quality audio cable it says. <coughs> I don't think this is Van Damme but I'm, I need to make sure obviously that it fits through the back of the uh, connector. does just will it fit through the actual mm. 
Yeah, and this might be too big. It might be too big. Too big. That's a shame. I really want to use that cable, but I do want—I do want to use strain relief as well. I could stick it in without the strain relief on. It obviously would fit fine then. So let me have a look. See what else I've got. So at the moment, that's okay without the strain relief, but. Um, Yeah, that's okay without the strain relief. Uh, it's shotgun cable. I, I like it because it holds together better. If you've got individual cables, you've got to really put something round round them, otherwise they just look rubbish. Um, what else have we got? Man? We've got individual cable. We've got massive cable. Is the individual cable any smaller than the shotgun cable, or we're going to? to literally go with it. I've got one lot. I mean, this the, these are cables that basically I picked up for. Um, God, may not be camera with that. I picked these cables up for making phono leads up. Really, I don't think I'm going to gain anything by using this. This is Van Dam silver plated wire now. See that one, one will fit through, but two I think is going to be another matter. Where's the other end? Yeah, we're, we're on the same diameter. So I'm going to have to use this shotgun cable and leave the strain relief out, which is a bit of a shame, but end of the day, decent picture quality is uh, better than a strain relief. really put any heat shrink on that because um, it's too big a connector but we have got strain relief built in there as long as I can get that in there which I can I reckon that's going to be fine okay so the key to this as um, Spanky has quite rightly said is um, is the pin outs on them now I'm not 100% on this, so um, let me see if I can find it and get it up on screen and um, we'll work it out from there. So bear with me and I'll, uh, I'll try and get it up on screen for you. The problem is, though, Theo, is, is every single surface has got something on it, isn't it? You've never ever got um, got somewhere that you can put something on. The wine's gone down, so I'm going to have to quickly top that up a minute. It's only a small glass, though. I'm not going mad. I'm not going mad. Just having a Saturday evening drink with you guys. So cheers, everybody. Right, now I have looked at this already, but um, I haven't got it here, it's on my iPad, so I'm going to need to look up um, Vic 20. lots of people that make these cables that you can buy you don't have to make your own but you know you, you you'll be able to make one of a lot better quality than you'd buy let's 
trying to see if I can find one that's got the actual pinouts on it. Yeah, there's no there's people that's selling these these with like audio left and right. There's no audio left and right. There's no stereo audio comes out of this thing. It's just mono audio. So don't get conned into buying one of those. Just trying to find a pin out now for one and I'll pop you on the screen in a second. Okay, no, I'm still trying to find a pin out on it. I have, um, I have got one. I've got one in, in my book anyway. Why, why am I messing about on here when I've got a book with it all in? <laughs> oh dear. Right, where's my Commodore 64 books now? Where have they been beamed up to? They were over there, but they're not there anymore. So, because I've just knocked them all on the floor. Programmer's reference guide has got the pin out in it. I believe this is the same for the Vic 20 or the Commodore 64. Dogs are kicking off again because I just knocked something up here and they think that uh, their mummy's home. Okay. So I've got the um, Vic20 Programmer's Reference Guide, and in the back of this, £12.50, look, back in the 80s. That would be a lot of money now, wouldn't it? We've got, this has actually got, look at that, it's actually got a circuit diagram for the Vic20 in it. Strangely enough, this came with the Vic20 that I've got, but it's the wrong board. <laughs> Here we go then. This is the one we want. Audio video. So let's get you on the overhead camera and we'll have a look. So pin one we definitely need to avoid because that's got five volts on it. You don't want to stick five volts up your tally. Pin 2 is a ground, so both our, our uh, shield wires need to be connected to that. So number 3 is video. Now this is this is the confusing thing. Pins 4 and 5 are both video signals. One is video low, the other one is video high. Um, and I've seen some people say connect to video low, some say connect to video high. And I'm not sure which one to connect to because there's conf conflicting information. Where's my friend Bjorn? Hmm. 
You'll just snip this, Spikey. Oh, you'll just take a, a photo of it. I'll say there's also um, the pinouts for the serial num serial socket and also the cassette um, socket there, but um, the one that we're looking at here now is the audio video. Where are we? Let's get that in shot a bit better. There we go. So this is looking at the, I believe this is looking at, at the actual connector on the back. So this is looking at the back of the computer, so you've got to imagine the, the pin out looking at you, which is always a bit awkward backwards. So the easiest way is to plug the thing in yeah easiest to just plug the thing in like that we just plugged it in and then we can read off exactly as it is here so we need to be connected to pin 2 for the ground, which is the centre one. So I'm going to um, just write myself a little bit of paper with this on there. Write myself a little bit of paper. I'm going to write myself a little bit of paper. What are you going on about now? Graham, what are you doing now? Okay. One, two... Three, four, five. Ground. Ground is that one. Audio is number three, which is the top one here. I've got to choose number four, which is video low, or five, which is video high. I'm going to go with the video low first. So that's looking at the back of the DIN socket. So obviously this pin's not used because that's our dreaded voltage, so we don't want that at all. <coughs> so that's a no-go. I think I'm going to try video low, ground and audio. So the ground I'm going to connect both the shield wires from each um, cable to. And we can swap from video low to video high and see if there's any difference on the tally. I mean, and again, it, it does say in some of the info that it differs. Windows sniping tool. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so if I use pins 2, 3, and 4, it's also compatible with C64 and C128. Okay. Good call, Bjorn. You think port pin 4 is correct? So let me just see. Uh, you want? Thank you, mate. I, I did mention you, but I didn't know if you were lurking there. So if if you're looking at the pins, so that is pin four. That is pin two. And that is pin three. So we'll leave video high for a minute. Uh, Bjorn is just saying that that'll work with a Commodore 64. Well, I've got a Commodore 64 coming as well. So uh, 
that'll be good because I can use the lead for both. Brilliant. Thank you, Bjorn. What do you what have you remembered, Harvey? Are you I used pin four for your sixty four, did you? <laughs> Harvey's in front of us. So so really what I'm what I'm saying is that that now equates to this. So I've now got my pin outlet. Bang on. So uh four two three four we need. Let's see if it goes bang. <laughs> so let's pop our Vic 20 out of the way. Have another sip of the wine. Used to make hundreds. Okay, Colin. Yeah, thank you for that. And welcome, Colin. So Colin is saying that pin 4 has a low-pass filter applied to it, where pin 5 is not filtered. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think what what we're saying is correct, really. But um, it might suit some, some TVs better than others. So until we connect it up, we'll never know. Okay. So here's my shotgun lead. First of all, what you obviously must do, and I don't want to be done with it, is make sure you pop your shell <laughs> on the lead. How many people, and be honest, <laughs> how many people have wired up something like this, or a PL259, forgot to put the shell on it, had to take it all back off again? This is so easily done, isn't it? Let's just put that down out of the way. So let's just... Um, Open the wires up. So I'm just going to um, use a blade to open them. He says a sharp one would be better. I've got the light right over the top of my head, which doesn't help. This is very good quality wire. I got this quite some time ago for making up um, phono leads for hi-fi gear, so it's good, really good quality wire. You can see the braid in it is um, pretty good. Hang on, have I got the right wire here? <laughs> is this not shielded? Or am I cracking up? Is this single core wire? Come on, Graham, that's never single core wire. That's mental if it is. High quality audio cable. Hmm. I can't see any audio cable inside that yet, unless. Oh, don't tell me this is. One is the shield and one is the. Oh no, there we are. <laughs> Thank God for that. So I've got some white wire inside that. I thought I was cracking up for a minute. Incidentally, I did I did uh, make an appearance on local radio this week. Those of you that follow the the um, messenger group would have heard me taking part in a radio quiz. <laughs> well, it wasn't a ra specifically on radios; it was a, a general knowledge quiz on the radio. So it didn't do too bad. It didn't make any waves, but uh, you know, so taking part that counts and all that. But it's good fun. 
So that was Radio Devon. I think that was on Wednesday, wasn't it? I know Paul did um, very kindly share a link to that. Okay. Let's just snip this um, sheathing off. So as I say, we've got our shield wire, which we're going to use as the negative. I haven't seen Brother Trev for a while either. He's uh, He's been working like mad over the Christmas period. Due to the um, thickness of this braid and the thinness of these connectors, I'm probably going to have to join two bits of braid together and then just use one as my overall, if you know what I mean. Let's put the solar and iron on. I've got just a mass of stuff there at the moment. So I think I'm going to use the white as the audio and the red as the video. I've done one clockwise and one anti-clockwise. So yeah, I think we're going to have to join those two together. Let's just crimp them together at the bottom. <clears throat> so I've got my two phono plugs, which I'll need. Yes, it was Jess on David Fitzgerald's. Yeah, I was on the um, Fighting Fits, mate. <laughs> if Paul's here, he'll have to post a link so everybody can have a laugh on he? it. Was, it was good fun. I didn't do brilliant, but um, I did get a plug-in for the YouTube channel. So I did uh, mention the Radio Cruncher YouTube channel. It's all good publicity, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to solder these together at the base here, so as they become one, so to speak. So they're now soldered together, so they are as one, so I can snip one of those off. So there's our three wires that we need. So I want to make sure that we've got that in the strain relief. It's going to be a bit tight with that earth wire, but... Um, you know, we've got to go with it. We've got to go with it. Yeah, so we need to make sure that that's squashed in there. Oh, hello. Okay, so obviously we can put that in later. if I take that out of the way. Yeah, these are good quality um, connectors, these. If you could see the insides of one of those other ones, they are so rubbish. I had to rewire one for that 
TV emulator thing. Right, so we need the ground wire in the bottom, we need the audio wire which we're going to use as the white wire up in the top here. So I think I'm going to cut that um, negative wire as close as I can. Just leaving enough to get in the connector. Yeah, I've uh, someone's mentioning crimping there. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of crimping. <laughs> I've had too many crimp connectors come apart in my time for uh, crimping. I, I'm. I'm. A, solder all the way for me. So I'm just cracking out the third hand tool. Let's zoom out a little bit because I'm a li little bit close here. Now let's um, <clears throat> just grab the earth wire, the negative terminal, the ground, whatever they're calling it, earth, ground, negative. So that has got to go in that one there. So I think what I might do is just tin these first. Get round to the R24 before Mrs. Cruncher comes home. What do you think? What's the odds? Can't even find my solder now. I pulled everything out of the way to get the TV in. <laughs> I've now lost my solder. How can you lose it? Oh. What? It's right beside me. Oh dear. Right, let's just tin these then. So there's that one there. I need to get my orientation right here. So audio is over here, pin three. And the video is this one next to the ground. Right, <clears throat> that's those tin. So you need to cut these wires off the same length, ideally. That's all three wires the same length. Let's get my. Uh, Wire strippers. I to think what they were called then. God dear. Just twist the ends of those. Stick them in the other clamp for a sec. In the ends of those as well. It's very difficult to, to do this upside down, so to speak. There we are. So three uh, connectors tinned. 
So I'm going to do the earth last because that's the most one that's going to cause the problems. So we said we're going to use the video it's going to be red. So we're going to go with that one first, then the white one to the far lead. This one here. Oh, it's supposed to come down like that. So let me see if I can zoom you right in while I'm doing this. Oh, is that that's a bit too close, isn't it? <clears throat> so both the wires are tinned. So all we need to do is a plenty of flux. Uh, sorry, there's plenty of solder on there to actually make the joint without me adding any so I'm just going to pop a little bit of flux on there because the flux does get used up I'm going to try and do this left handed mm. <laughs> it's difficult to try and work around the camera now ok that's the first one in So the other one goes in here. Stay. Ah. No, that's that is cool, but it's not very well because this is all moving around everywhere. That's better. Final one is the ground connection. Oh, cool. That's pretty warm. So just let me uh, get that lined up. Top of my finger now. Ah, dear. Right, let's see if I can get this. Uh... There are too many hands on the go here. I've only got two hands, and I, I think I've got five according to this. Okay, come on. There we go. Go on, you know you want to. slightly out of line that one there so when I've heated that pin up it's moved slightly it does happen with these same with PL259s as well so just heat that move that pin back in line that's better So there we are. That allegedly is our um, din lead done. So we need to um, let's get that out of the way for a minute. 
going to need that again shortly for the phono plugs. <coughs> so that's going to go on there. It's a tight squeeze this, isn't it? <laughs> this is the thing, you can use a lot smaller cable than this. You don't need to use whacking great cable like I've got here. So you don't need to be using specialist audio cable for this. if I can get both cables clamped in there. It doesn't look like it wants to do both cables. It's going to do both cables, whether it likes it or not. <clears throat> Tell you what, these are pretty, pretty strong. Very strong. Where's my other pliers gone? I'm not looking at the chat at the moment people so if you are talking to me I can't see I've got, got my head in this trying to get it done right so let's have a look here I just want to try and make sure that both cables are well and truly clamped into this got them. So now hopefully I'll push up in there. We should be able to And where's that little tiny screw gone? <laughs> Don't tell me that was rolled off somewhere. Where's my little screw? Come on. It's one of those miniature little jack screws. Let me just get the other camera on. Probably rolled down underneath this camera, I expect. Or the goat's got it. <clears throat> Trouble, this desk does slope and everything rolls to the back. Which is good in some ways because it doesn't roll off the front and onto the floor. But um, no, that one's gone for a minute. So let's just grab another one for a sec. So I've got enough plugs to make up three leads because I've got two VIC-20s and a Commodore 64 so ideally I want to make up plugs for each of them. Hi Victor, yeah it's a good quality one mate. Green. Right, 
So there we are. One ring din connector. Gold gold dump um, plated pins. That's the front end. Right, so the next thing is to um work out how much we're gonna need. And this is gonna obviously sit behind a telly. So I think we're gonna need probably three meters of this. Not for this particular tally, but for the, for our main tally in the lounge. I am gonna want three meters of that. So let's have a look. The old uh, nose to nose to arm trick. Three meters. <laughs> I've got a patch of this horrible stuff on the bench here. This <sighs> horrible grease. Okay, right, phono leads next, phono plugs. So there's my two phono plugs. cheap ones, nothing special about these. <clears throat> but they will do the job. Again, this is not hi-fi gear. This is probably a bit overkill, this wire, for this job, but it's all I've got. So it was either that or just trying to repurpose another cable, which I didn't really want to do. I wanted to build one from scratch. So that's both me. Shells on. So I've got to connect that lot up next. So bear with me a second. I'm just going to have a quick comfort break. Hey, 
<laughs> Back in the room. We're still going. We're still going, Chris. Right. So, yeah, we're making up a composite video lead at the moment. Um, so, we said red was going to be video, didn't we? So, we need a little bit of yellow heat shrink on that cable as well. Let's get my heat shrink. I think it's normally yellow and white, but there's yellow and black on this, but uh, we'll pop a bit of yellow heat shrink on here as well, just for good measure. I think that's the, yeah, the red one is the video. I'll pop a little bit of white on. Audio one. Here we go. Don't embrace this job. Well, these this is pretty easy now. We've only got two connectors, uh, two connections. One is the center pin, and then uh, the earth goes through this little hole. The negative. Let me squash it all together and screw it back up. Pretty easy. So let's just strip the wire back. So say the red we used as our video signal. So just twist that round. Quickly tin that. Let's use the third arm tool again, it just makes it that little bit easier. the other one. Tin that as well. Let's do the same with the other one while we're at it. Might as well do both at the same time. those as well. Hopefully the thing is, is again the wire is a bit um, a bit thick so why not go through the <coughs> through 
through the right pin, let's see if it will. Yeah, I'll go through that hole. Ideal. Right. So I'm just going to quickly tin these as well. Just finds it's easy, easier. You don't need to try and feed solder in, then you've just got to heat it up. Aren't that brilliant because the uh, they're moving with the heat. <laughs> Let that cool down a minute. Should use the clip on that really as a heat sink. Anyway, not to worry, it's no problem. See where I am. Where where's the camera? Where's the camera when you want it? So I'm just dropping that one into the center connector a minute. It will go in there. Get in there. There we are. Solder the negative. Makes it a lot better. Um, it's coping with the size of the wire quite nicely. So snip that off flush. Let's see if we can get a better view and angle for you. Third hand tool. It's seen better days. I've I actually th had to 3D print um, a new ball for it because it's um, it broke the old one. Bless it. There we are. That's one done. Let's do the other one a minute. I want to focus here, really. Let's 
better. Right. <clears throat> so again, I'm just going to tin the inner connector. Hopefully. Ah, little swine. Okay, that's that. Let's flip it round. Snip that off. A little bit flusher than that. Apologies, as I say, I'm, I'm not looking at the chat at the moment, so hopefully my lovely moderators are sorting you all out. There we go, that's that connected. And that should be a composite rate. Composite radio? Composite radio? What are you doing all about now? Composite lead. Good to go. Right, squash this in. Plastic goes over all the connections. It's pretty brave, isn't it? Making that leads live. So, what I think we'll do, we'll just push this um, heat shrink up just so it's just sat in there like that. That's quite neat, isn't it? I like that. Um, flame on that just uh, very quickly. It's got sooty now. <laughs> Shrink that on. Same with the red one, which is our video. Let's just squash this one down. Yellow. 
There we are. One hopefully composite lead. Easy. Right, so the question is, <laughs> will it or won't it? Will it work or won't it work? Place your bets, please. No. Okay, that's miles away. I've obviously not that. Hey, what's going on now? <laughs> what was that all about? Whoa. with my camera just now to um, do something else. Right. <clears throat> Let's get the VIC-20 back up. So now we're going to connect in with our new cable. I hope this works. Is such a better fit than the other one. <clears throat> so on the telly we're going to connect the yellow to the video signal and the white to the audio. It's just down out of shot that is. That's, um, people. I'm just trying to show you that um, it's connected down the bottom there. So you can just see, just out of shot, it's just in shot actually, yellow is to the right and the white one to the left. Let's just line that up a bit better now. while I line this up. Okay. Right, power supply. Joystick. Sure, I've got a couple more joysticks, but this is the first one I laid my eyes on. <sighs> right. Power. 
telepower. So now, hopefully, if we push the AV, whoa, it only works. It, oh, oh, it's a better picture as well. It is a better picture. Gonna have to sort this. Let's try another game. Um, let's try that Star Battle again, which, which will play full screen. For some reason, Gorf isn't playing full screen. Whether it never did, I don't know, because I've never, never read that one before. Yeah, I've got to sort this joystick. This ain't no good. It's better than using the keys, but... Um, stuff. is much sharper. Picture is much sharper. I don't know if you can see that on your screens, but anyway, you don't want to, you don't want to watch me playing um, video games all night long, do you? <laughs> so that's enough of that for you. Well. That, that really is all I wanted to do today for the VIC-20. I've got it working. I've got a composite video cable. Um, what more do you need? Let's just sort my camera back out again. I've mullered that. Oh, dear. Excuse me. <laughs> we can't see what I'm doing, actually, so... up Graham. That's scary. Why is that so close now? Oh, of course I zoomed it in didn't I? 
I was going to say, I'm a huge. <laughs> now I'm tiny. Ah, oh, do you can't win, can you? There's that, that's better. Might sort the focus out. Whew. And we can go back picture in picture, you can see me again. Thanks, Bjorn. How about that? I think everybody appreciated that. So that's that's basically how you make um, that's basically how you make an AV lead or composite lead for a Commodore 64. Or sorry, Vic 20 or Commodore 64. According to Bjorn, that will work on both. So, uh, yeah, well pleased at doing that. Saves messing about with that modulator, doesn't it? It'd be interesting to see how it, how it looks on my big tally downstairs, really. Thanks, Fat Tony. You can. Come on round, Tony. <clears throat> right. Uh, someone's offered me £500 for both my Amiga 1200 all box complete and my Amiga... 500. That's probably not bad money, Harvey. I wouldn't mind a Commodore monitor, Harvey. If you've got a Commodore monitor you want to get shot off, you'll have to let me know, wouldn't you? Goodman's branded tally. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is an old cathode ray tube CRT telly Paul as you probably know have faith young one <laughs> when will you stream next I will stream next next Sunday I'm not finished yet though Morgan it's quarter to nine Mrs Cruncher is going to be home soon and I, I think we're probably out of time to do the R24 but we can have a look at it can't we but what we can do what we can do people is we can do the draw for the world radio and television handbook let's do that we can do one today can't we so let's do it <clears throat> Let's do it. Whoa, Resonator, you are a star, people. When this package arrives from Resonator, you are going to be amazed. It's going to be at least one live stream's worth, if not more. Let's do a giveaway then. World Radio TV Handbook. Shall we give people a chance to quickly um, enter? Ooh. Has anybody got the link to the last video? Let me see if I can find it a minute. Let's see if I can find it because I think that's I think that's Mrs. Cruncher. I think I can hear her. Let me see if I can find the video. <coughs> find the video link unless someone's already someone will put it in there won't they uh, my library I want why is it keep coming up to history hmm oh this is rubbish this isn't it Let's go to YouTube Studio. I'm in YouTube Studio. Videos. Someone's going to beat me to this, aren't they? Yeah, it was my New Year's Day, wasn't it, I think? I think it was this one. Just bear with me. 
I'll just double check. Yes, okay. That is the one, I believe. If you write. Yeah, this is this is the video. Okay. So let's um, share the link because I'm going to need that link anyway. The link is copied. I bet someone's already done this. Yeah, I knew you'd beat me to it. <laughs> well, that's that's the link that I've got to the video. So in this video. In the comments section of the video that I've just posted the link to, you need to put RTVS. You need to type RTVS into the comments. Let's just get me on a minute. Let's get a picture and picture out. So, yeah, RTVS into the comments, people. RTVS and you you could possibly win 2016 RTVS. I know it's not the latest one, but it is absolutely rammed with um, some good good info. It's well worth having that. Oh, hang on, sorry. Ignore that, people. <laughs> oh, that's a big sheep moment, isn't it? A big goat moment, even. Goat moment. <laughs> yes, ignore that. So you need to write WRTH. I'm glad you're looking out for me, Paul and Andrew. You need to type WRTH into the comments for this video. I better just click on that as well, I want to make sure it's the right one. No, something went wrong. Something went wrong. It's probably Gary's link is better, isn't it? No, it's WRTH. Not not in the comments here. Not in the comments here, Wenlock. I think Gary had the right link there. So it's basically it's in the New Year's Day, in the New Year's Day video, or live stream, in the New Year's Day live stream. And my link works, Gary, does it? So are you all with it, people? Are you with this? Let me um, just get up, get my screen up again, just to make sure we're 100% with this. Okay, you should, yes, okay. So this is the video, it's a New Year's Day live special, streamed live on 1st of January. Now we announced the R24 and the WRTH, not the RTVS. What the hell that is, I do not know. WRTH, so you can see people have entered here, look. Um, R24. R24, WRTH, Greg has entered, Gary Cooper at WRTH, 
Victor Northern Rambler. It's obviously Victor's going to win it, isn't he? Colin Pamplin, look. It's a lot of love for the R24, but George fancies the WRTH, look. Paul Taylor Jackson, WRTH. Racing Demon, Mike. Paul Collins, Mike Atlantis. Theo, Clive, Superbike Rider. Richard Paris, Dave Roberts. Yeah, there's quite a, quite a lot of love for the WRTH. Look, RTVS. <laughs> uh, yeah, Harvey, it's the it's the WRTH, mate. It's a WRTH. That's that's me. <laughs> uh, dear. So yeah, ignore the RTVS. I do not know where that came from. Radio and television servicing, isn't it? Idiot. So yeah, lots of <laughs> RT. Sorry, Mr. Laser Light. I've uh, I've confused you, my. So you need to be typing WRTH in the comments for this. So if you've put the wrong one in, just, just put another one in. It'll just overwrite the last one. Are we all, are we all with the program now? That's my fault. That's my cock up. So there's plenty of uh, entries for the WRTH. WRTH. Right, have we all got that now? Let me just go back to my um, my ugly mug. <laughs> dear oh dear you can tell it's getting late can't you so Mr Laser Light 7 welcome mate thanks for joining us but you need to type in WRTH don't confuse everybody Andrew you'll just confuse people <laughs> it's it's capitals W R T H I'm gonna remove the messages that are wrong because you, you literally I know we're having a laugh but we are gonna confuse everybody to how it is W R T H, you're right. Hey Clive, I didn't see you lurking there, mate. Don't forget, you need to enter it in that video that we've posted the link to. What's peeing you off, Harvey? It is. You're right, though, Harvey. It's WRTH. You're right, mate. No, not RTVS, Morgan. <laughs> it's not. It's WRTH. Right. I'm going to refresh, refresh it, and then I'm going to do the draw. Let's not mess about anymore. I'm just going to refresh it. Has everybody had time to? Um... Sounds like <coughs> Mrs. Cruncher's home. So this is going to be it. Cruncher's in the house. So I've um, refreshed it. I'll give it one more refresh and then we're going to do it, people. Nearly there. I think you've got it, Paul. You've you've put it in the in the comments of this, something you. Not in the comments here.
it's all capital letters and it's got to be um, in that video right are you all here with me let me just double check yes you are right okay so this video if you haven't entered your name in it now you need to New Year's Day live special WRTH in capitals no spaces Collins in loads of people in yeah it's a pause already in look so we need to grab the link to this video so let's hit share copy the link and I'm going to my random comment picker I'm going to paste it in there and fetch it let's just get my chat back up in the corner so I can see what you're saying George behave you're just confusing people Time you out, George. I'll time you out. <laughs> Let's just squash the screen down a little bit so I can keep the chat up. Are you ready? So, we need to go to the keyword filter and we need to type in WRTH. Don't forget, people, if, if you're... Um, Check that I'm here. Yeah, okay. So if you if you're not from the UK, then you're gonna need to help towards postage for this. So if you're in the the USA, Australia, New Zealand, wherever you are in the world, I'll pay postage to the UK and the difference you'll need to make up if, if you're okay with that. So bear in mind that is the condition of this. It'll pop post it worldwide, but you'll need to make the difference up in postage, yeah? I think that's fair. I think that's fair. So continue. 21. 21. Shall I do it or not? Shall, shall we bother? Shall I bother? I might just have a, another glass of wine. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Mrs. Crunch is in the house. She's doing something to a duck, which we can't mention. <laughs> so let's go for it. 21 comments. He's only done it again. It's the same old names, isn't it? It's the same old, same old. Theo won the um, Radio Cruncher beer last year. The beer last year. <laughs> I think I got your address, Theo. Stuart's inquiry. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, well done, Theo, mate. Well deserved. You do deserve it. Let's get rid of the picture and picture. Go back onto my ugly mug. <laughs> Sorry, Harvey, it's not you again. Poor old Harvey. You win one day, Harvey. You will win one day, Harvey. You never know.
So Theo is now the proud owner of the World Radio TV Handbook for 2016. It doesn't come with a goat though, Theo. That's just there because I'm being foolish. <laughs> but no, that is a nice book. I'm sure you'll have hours and hours and days and days reading that, mate. That is coming your way soon. Just a second, people. So there you are, people. Well done, Theo. Well deserved, mate. So let's have a quick look at the channel stats for today. <laughs> <coughs> a photo finish <laughs> unfortunately not Tony what we'll do is we'll do the draw for the R24 next week so next week I won't mess with any computer stuff we'll get the R24 on the bench and we'll do the live stream on the R24 we'll get it um, restrung, serviced, aligned and then we'll do the draw for it at the end of next week's live stream alright there's no point rushing the R24, I want to do it right, and um, it's going to take me a good couple hours, maybe three hours to get it sorted, if not more, so uh, we'll do that next Sunday. So uh, what else do we need to do? What else do we need? Let's have a look at the um, stats for today's videos. Uh, again, people that have done the um, Super Chats today, thank you very much. As I say, the Super Chats paid for those lovely screwdrivers I've got. I was going to show you the penultimate cartridge for the um, VIC-20, which is going to be on my hit list, I think. I would like one of these. I really would. George, thank you. Theo, you don't need to pay me towards postage, Theo, but thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. Stars. Ah, oh, you guys are great, aren't you? There's lots of people talking about the penultimate culture. I can't find the link to it. Hang on a second. Uh, the future was 8 bit. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Screen capture cube. Here we go. Am I on? Yes, I am. So, this is what I was banging on about. And thanks, Northern Rambler, George, Pile of Poo, excellent, mate, thank you. Victor, thank you, thank you very much. So this is the penultimate cartridge. And um, there's lots of uh, YouTube videos out there which, which are well worth watching. But like it says, it's, it's uh, probably the only VIC-20 cartridge you'll ever need. So it's got 35k of RAM on it. And over 40 ROM images. Now, I believe the ROM Im images are the actual cartridge games. And this isn't actually the uh, the site that you can get it off of, but you can have a look on this. There's, there's loads and loads of games on it. So it's basically got um, a massive, great pile of cartridge games all all inside this thing on the memory it's an amazing bit of kit so as I say you can go up to 35k of RAM with it and you just plug it in the back you don't need any fancy um, 
any fancy software or anything you just plug this thing straight in the cartridge slot and away you go it is a cracking bit of kit um, I think this is Tynemouth who are the ones that made it, I think. Let's just okay that. Tynemouth Software Shop. Cool, that's, that's difficult to read. Penultimate cartridge. There we are. It's actually 49 99 at the moment. It's out of stock. I'll oh, see Penultimate Plus. Uh, that's the one. $57.99 it is. So this is the official site for it. And um, it's only for the VIC-20. But this new one has got the dead test, which is basically a software for, um, for diagnosing faults with the VIC-20. So it's got 70 built-in games in this new one as well, including some brand new ones that have been written just for the VIC-20 recently. You can use it with an S SD to IEC, which is a, a, a cassette emulator, which I'm probably going to need to use if I can't get these cassette decks working. But look at the, look at the games on it. There's everything. Some classics, Choplift Alert, Battle Zone, Dig Dug, Defender, Cracking. Has it got Galaxians? It hasn't got Gal uh, Yes, it's got Galaxians, look. Woohoo! And it's got Gorf on it. So all of these all of these cartridges I've got here are available on this one cartridge. I've got Omega Race, but um, you've got Miss Pac-Man as well, look. And Pac-Man. So all of those all of those cartridge games are available just on that one cartridge. So as I say, the um if anybody has got a VIC 20 and they want to know Post that in the uh, chat so people can click on that. But uh, yeah, that's what I'd like to get next. And that will basically just mean I've got one cartridge in the back of the machine that I can play loads of stuff on. That's quite a nifty looking um, joystick as well, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, this this um, company, T TFW8B.com, they do a lot of um, a lot of stuff. Yeah, I have to tell her, tell her how wonderful she is. <coughs> oh dear me. Theo, buy a lottery ticket. You only wanted the book, Theo. That's great, mate. So let's just go back onto my ugly mug a minute. Cancel the picture in picture. Let me just get the stats up for today. So one, once again, this um, this has been a bit different, hasn't it? I, I wasn't gonna. Well, I wanted to get the Vic Twenty finished, which I've done. I've got the Vic Twenty finished. That that is now pretty much ready to go. I can use that with the cartridges. I can't use the tape decks. But I'm either going to have to re rejuvenate the pinch rollers or buy new pinch rollers for it, which are stupid money. Crazy money. Ridiculous. But where'd you buy it, you know? So let's jump onto my screen again. So let's have a look at the analytics for today's stream. Let's restore the chat in there. Let's go wide. Let's go wide. Just let the chat catch up. So 
So, um, let's have a look at some of the analytics. A 33 concurrent viewers. What have we had? That's not been massive today. Probably because I'm all on a, on a Saturday rather than a Sunday. Looks like we peaked about 48 today. I think we had 60 odd last week, didn't we? But um, we've got a chat revenue of £27, which is brilliant. So if you look at the viewers, we've got um, Theo, a couple quid for a new camera, Paul Cody's, some poo for me, Derek, again, Derek's a contributor with a nice little um, super chat. Uh, no, a super sticker, that's it. And Fat Tony, Racing Demon Mike. Lovely. Thank you very much, Mike. He's got I think Mike's gone there, isn't he? Paul Taylor Jackson as well. Thank you very much. Fat Tony. Theo Bovrol. To post is George and Northern Rambler Victor, so thank you all. And one troll, Tony. <laughs> Who's the troll? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, that's great. Stream health. We've not had any major health warnings, I don't think, but you know, we've still got this bit rate is lower than the recommended and all that rubbish. We don't want a picture in picture. All right, let's get back to my camera. That's it then today, people. I hope you've enjoyed today's stream. I've enjoyed it. It's gone on a little bit long, but um, you know, it always does, doesn't it? It always goes on a bit long. So thank you for uh, all the super chats. And uh, as I say, I've got some um, a little project coming up to build an emulator that will work with. It'll work with the Commodore 64 as well as the Vic 20. So um, I've got a, a Commodore 64 coming from Mr. Christoffi. So uh, that'll be something that we can play with soon. So we'll have an emulator for that, so we can play lots of Commodore 64 games. Our cable will work with the Commodore 64 and the VIC-20, so a lot of it's interchangeable between the two two systems. So, Good stuff. Always good banter, Theo, isn't it? <laughs> Always banter, mate. So next week, as I say, we'll get the R24 finished. Totally finished. In the week, I'll, I'll do the Danish oil on the sides of it, so I'll get that up and ready. But shall I, shall I do the restring or do you want to do the restring live? I'm a bit scared about doing the restring in live, but we could do, couldn't we? <laughs> uh, we could do it live. <laughs> I know I know it's been computer stuff today, but it's it's not just computer stuff, is it? We've we've recapped something, we've done some soldering. We put a new voltage regulator in. We've done heat sinking. You know, we've made up cables. We've done all sorts of stuff, really. And a little bit of computer at the end. <laughs> Restring live. No, no. <laughs> Only your dad. What? What, George? What? What's up with your dad, George? <laughs> oh, right, okay. Harvey saying, are oh, George's parents Greek? Sounds like a Greek name. Okay. You've seen Galaxians again, what not to like. Yeah. That's a sort of Galaxian clone, isn't it? Um, isn't it, Tony? I do like that. I keep putting that game back in because I do like that game. I loved Space Invaders and I love uh, Galaxians and that um, Star Battle is is a bit of both really. It's sort of Space Invaders come Galaxians. But um, as I say, if I get that penultimate cartridge, we've actually got the actual Galaxians on that, which would be good fun. 
I do need to get that case sorted, but I've got problems with 3D printer at the moment, so there you go. Compu Cruncher, Spanky. Spanky, aka Simon. Simon, aka Spanky. Thank you very much, mate. Without you, that keyboard would be trash still. So, uh, really got to thank you, mate. Um, shout out for Spanky people. Don't forget, Spanky has got a YouTube channel. Spanky's Magic Piano. If you click on his name and jump on Go To Channel, Spanky's got a channel. So subscribe. He's helped me out a lot. He has helped me out a lot. So uh, Spanky, shout out for you, mate. You've uh, you made this Fit Twenty what it is. And uh, he's posted me those bits for nothing, people. He's, he's he wouldn't take anything for them. So he's donated that to the channel and to me. So, um, great stuff. Thank you, mate. Thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Anybody that helps me out, I'd love, love to help people out back if I can. Always help people out. I get loads of emails and messages and loads and loads of asking about, can I do this, can I do that? And I'll, I'll answer them all. I'll help anybody out. So, um... It's nice, nice for other people to help me out as well. Really appreciate it. So yes, Spanky's got some radio videos out there. I think his last one was an R nine hundred, if I if I remember rightly, Spanky. So uh, yeah, there we go. Anyway, people, I'm pretty much done for today. Hopefully next week I'll get the main camera back up and running. That's been a pain today, not having that camera. I've been a bit out of sorts. I've not had my proper microphone. It's been a bit of a mess, but you know, we got through, didn't we? We still had a show. <laughs> anyway, catch you all next week, people. I'll be here normal time, I think, on Sunday, around about one o'clock, unless anything else happens. You never know. You just never know what's going to happen in the Cruncher household. So bye for now, and catch you again soon. If I can find the intro video, that is. if I can find the intro extra bye for now